and they were, you know, they were uh, charging, I don't know how many, how much, almost $50 or something like that. You know, that's like boss, typical Indian, $50 if charging. Ka dene wala. So jugaad karke, I kept on roaming around and found out there was a place where there was a tall guy who had a small counter and he was polishing the shoes. I said, it's very interesting to polish the shoes. In the middle of the polish the shoes, he had a typical Indian shoes. He had a Indian shoes and he had a main power supply. Se, he had made one you know, plug point, no? multiple sockets and things like that. And that hero has a placard there. Charging, phone charging, one device, one dollar. Just you could you know charge phones and things like that. One device could be charged, whichever way. Either device, one or two dollars. I think one dollar. And I said, this is a good place. Either sit and phone charge. Karte. iPhone being iPhone, such a screwed up phone it is and a bad battery. It takes a long time to charge. Extremely expensive phone with a bad battery and bad everything, but very expensive. God bless Steve Jobs' soul. So, you know, I sat there and I had a lot of time to kill. I have a lot of time to kill, right? So, sit home. And one of the things I've done all my life and I've been teaching for almost 25 years, that I'm a trained urban ethnographer. So, I do a lot of urban anthropological studies where essentially in the market spaces and, and malls and and roads and others and wherever, wherever you can find, I essentially observe what people do and write about it and do research about it and whatever. So I started observing this guy, tall strapping six foot three inches guy who was doing Juta Palish. He had two counters, two seats. And I started to notice, what is he talking? And I was a close corner, right? So he couldn't see me, but I could really see him and figure out. I realized by observing that I've never found anybody ever in my life who would so passionately shine the shoes. Matlab, itni shiddat se wo admi juta palish kar raha hai. It's like the way Shahrukh Khan romances is the epitome of romance in the Hindi film industry. And then he's talking very interesting conversation with his customers. Couple of women, couple of men. And I started to notice because I was sitting there for quite some time that his language is changing. And he was, so I could figure out that he's talking with Africans, he's talking something else, with Europeans, he's talking something else, with some Indians, he's talking in English and whatever. Maybe a bit of Urdu also, he was able to figure out, or Arabic, I guess, I think Arabic. So once I was done charging my phone, I went to give him the dollar and he was about, it was about to close his shop and he was free. So I struck a conversation with him. So I asked him, is it your shoe counter? Uh, this is money and this is very interesting jugaad you found. He said, what do you mean by shoe counter? I was like, shoe counter, means shoe counter, or kya bolunga, madla, right? Kata, this is not a shoe counter, this is my business idea. Lacha, tell me more about it. He said, one year ago, he was able to convince the Addis Ababa airport authorities to put him up this particular shoe counter because he, he noticed that a lot of people who are coming in are then in the morning want to go to offices or meetings and others that they don't have uh, really a place where they could actually get their shoes signed. I said, okay, tell me more. So he told me about his idea. He has been able to create 
a similar structure in a mall in Nadi Sababa. And he's been a serial entrepreneur. And he's got one more counter in the other corner of the same airport. This is manned by him. And he was working almost 16 hours to do the shoe shine. And he was charging $3 to $4 per shoe shine. I'm expensive, $4. But in international airports, it's okay because you're carrying dollars. If $3 is okay, you could pay. At the back of the paper envelope, I calculated about number of hours, number of footfalls for him on an average. What are the number of conversion, the conversion ratio, purely from my retail instinct. And I found out that in dollar terms, this guy was making almost $100,000 in a year. In Addis Ababa, $100,000 was able to make through his three shoe counters, which is almost like a investment banker with a Harvard degree would be able to make it uh, there. So his name is Ababu Abbas. And he runs something called Go to Shoe Shine. And he had branded it beautifully. He had a uh, t-shirt which he had branded like that. He could speak five languages. He was learning two more. Not only that, he was also enrolled in an executive MBA program in the, in the Addis Ababa University and the weekends he was going there. He had two failed startups. This is his third, this was his third startup and he was making some reasonable money. Later on, he showed me a couple of videos where he was being featured in the, in the Addis Ababa, uh, you know, Karan Johar equivalent coffee with current types places where there was a uh, guy who was, you know, and he showed me and he was, so I learned three things from that. First, I realized that koi bhi kaam chota nahi hota. It's not that every day you'll get a million dollar idea. Maybe if you work hard enough, your idea will become a million dollar once. Second, love for his work. It was a boring, stupid shoe shine job. But every single day he would walk up, work 16 hours and do it so beautifully that people would love that simple act of shoe shine so much. Third, he has never stopped learning. So even if whatever stage of life he was in, he had not stopped learning. He was still learning. He was going to the university, doing the work, something like that. Beautiful. So we said goodbye to each other. And I came to India. At that point of time, I was dean at IAM. And I wrote an article in a retail magazine about him, which a lot of my students read. A couple of years later, one of my students had forgotten about Ababu Abbas in the sense that he has the story had gone, everybody has heard about it, read about it. A student of mine who had read that story has heard this story from me in my class, here in IIM at that point of time, rang me up. He, he sent, sent me a urgent Facebook message. He said, Dwari sir, I want your phone number. Can you send me your phone number quickly? I have a surprise for you. I sent my phone number. He called me up on WhatsApp and he said, that, guess what, where am I? So the student of mine was traveling and he had been to Addis Ababa airport and he remembered Ababu Abbas. He went and found Ababu Abbas at Gudu Shushan. And he said, you know, I've heard your story. I read your story from a professor of mine and I would want to connect you, my professor to you. So they made me a video call where I could talk to my student Azim and Ababu. It was brilliant because that day was my birthday. So they really gave me at 10 o'clock in the night. I was about to go to sleep. They gave me a very beautiful last day, last yeah, hour present and a great talk. And I was very happy to get connected, get his mobile number and so on and so forth. So I asked him, Ababu, what can I do for you? 
He said, Professor, I love reading, but we don't get good books in Ethiopia. So can you send some good business books, good entrepreneurship books, some good branding books to me? I said, okay. So I found out from my large network of people at that time when people were frequently traveling to Africa that who all are traveling via Addis Ababa. So some people landed up saying that, yes, uh, next month I'm going, next week I'm going, or probably sometime I was planning and this and that. So I had a standing request to all of them that whenever you're going towards through Addis Ababa airport, carry a business book, uh, interesting books and, 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 and find Ab Ababu and give it to him. So he was able to get some very quality, interesting books uh, through my network. Then he asked me that, uh, can you help me with his master's thesis? He's an MBA thesis. He was, he was working on a business plan and he wanted my validation and we worked on this. And, and uh, last to last year, the first wave of, uh, what is it called? Yeah, pandemic. He graduated from the university with the MBA. He sent me this photograph with the robes and everything else. So here is one guy who does the shoe shine and almost is a purchasing power parity terms is a dollar millionaire in his country by shining shoes with an, with an attitude of learning, which is of lifelong learning. Amazing, amazing, you know, humbling story for me whenever I, I, I talk to entrepreneurs and I respect their zeal, I respect their risk-taking ability, I respect the fact that they've chosen and all of you have chosen this difficult task. Remember always about a guy in Addis Ababa who has taught at least me in this lesson that perseverance pays, you never stop learning and make your idea the million dollar idea. You'll never get a million dollar idea always. So whatever ideas you've got, good, bad, ugly, if you work hard enough, we could, we could do that. Okay, then I've got one story which I'll catch it in the end for you guys. So let's get on with building your brand and a bit of go to market for some of you. Okay. So uh, I will have some of those questions and you could post your responses in the chat. That way it's easier or you could raise your hands and I could then, or mute, don't speak specifically, raise your hands or I, I can't see most of you. So I have to really figure this out, but maybe chat would be fine. So I have this first question for you that why some startup launches are good, but some really don't take off launches, which means the product service, is there in the market, but somehow they fail to take off. Any quick impressions from your side? I'm opening the chat here. I could see very quickly. You could type it down. Timing. How do you define Dr. Mandar? Communication. Okay, Devesh. Way of execution, Rahul. Okay. Plan and execution, right team, very important, okay. You're not really solving the problem. Probably the customers are not looking at your solution as the solution for their problem. Missing the hook as per Daksh, market is not mature, so you're pretty early. Could be multiple reasons, communication, product, market fit, no budget for ads, Anishankar says. Utsa Pradhan says tenacity and perseverance is missing from the founders. Okay, move on, move on. A few more before we move on to the next one. Failing at go to market, bad team, wrong intention. Intention wrong. I'm not too sure, uh, Kanan, that intention might be wrong. Barking at a wrong tree, okay. Uh, 
Faith on yourself is a bad thing or a good thing? Harsh? Faith on yourself, you're saying, is it a good thing or a bad thing? That's a starting point, right? If you can't, if you don't have faith in yourself, how do you start? Intention, uh, Kanan is saying, intention of getting only funding, not really solving. Oh, that ways. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Do you have any example of it? Something like that? What is that, that tablet? That India phone, right? That they made the con game, right? They made, uh, uh, yeah, that, that those bunch of people. Yeah, yeah, some of those people are there, yeah. So no network of, or connection. No network of connection where? In terms of the market or dealers or uh, channel partners or, I don't know, market, market connection. In terms of you really don't know how to sell through your partners and who are those people. And you just, uh, great. Uh, good ideas from all of you. I've covered quite a bit in terms of a lot of things can go wrong. Uh, a lot of things can go wrong in terms of pay them themselves an idea. They don't achieve the target. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes the market doesn't let you do that. Even if you have faith in your ideas, but the market is not ready, or maybe you're not ready for the market, or a lot of things happen there. So a lot of things are possible, as you mentioned. Uh, and hence, we need to be mindful about this fact that a, a lot can happen between your ideation till the time you come to your market and then test it out in the market and then reactions can be very, very scary sometimes and reactions can be exuberant as well. Okay. So, tell me, fill in the blanks. Scaling up, okay. So, okay. Let's move on to the next one. Fair enough. You're all not talking right time building. Who found us? Very important. So, what is the fill in the blank? Okay, one answer has come. Where is the blank? Okay. <laughs> Before it to put a few stop to all your worries. It's a black mark, right? EV, EV it, okay, brand it, okay. Kedar, stop it, to put a few stop to worries, okay. Few more, few more answers, few more answers. Few more answers, anyone stop it, okay. To put a fuel stop to all your, okay. Launch it, okay, okay. Any 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 guess what product are we talking about? Say it, price it, change it, plan it, okay. Any idea of what product are we talking about? Fill it. Any product uh, category can you tell us? Fuel, okay, okay. Ani says fuel. Who else? Any any other ideas? EV, okay. Electric vehicle. I don't know. I'm just asking you guys. Ankit says electric vehicles. Kapil says EV. Ani says fuel. Uh, any other ideas? Any other ideas? Quickly before I move on. Ignite it. Charge it. Okay. Spread. <laughs> so they've used it, credit, credit. So it's completely counterintuitive the way they were able to come up to this. Very cheeky ad, very interesting the way their ads are very interesting. I don't know about the product yet. What do they do? I'm still not being able to figure out or head or tail, but their, uh, their advertising and branding is very, very interesting and then they they create a lot of buzz they create a lot of buzz uh, you know 
Right. Okay. So they were able to do something interesting here. Sometimes a conversation also happen in a very interesting way when you use humor and wit. Uh, this was last year. So Basit says, my parents think I'm as useless as Dash in your phones during this lockdown. This was almost two years ago, yeah, April. Any guesses? What is this in the first one and the second one? It's very famous uh, banter which has happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zomato and, and Uber actually. So yeah, again, very interesting banter through which conversations were built around it. Now this is, you've seen it multiple times in LinkedIn and other platforms where founders themselves have come on board to build the brand uh, 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 using various interventions, you know, in terms of earlier, it used to be the people who are working it or otherwise, but I've seen it nowadays, a lot of founders engage directly with a lot of uh, people in various uh, roles. And then that creates a very, very interesting conversations with a lot of people. So like Harsha, you know, is a founder CEO, is reaching out to somebody who's joined White Hat Junior. has got no business being there, but you know, you're creating a conversation with somebody who might join you later sometimes. You never know as you know somebody. So it's a reverse kind of it. Sometimes people also try to, to link it up from there, you know. So very interesting uh, uh, way to, to create a niche for yourself. This is, I don't, I'm not sure if some of you are from Pune, but I used to live in Pune uh, uh, some time back. And there's one uh, bistro which was there in, in Pashan uh, Road, very small bistro set up by uh, a, a chef called Suchit Save. And, and the way this guy would create unique personal relationships with each of his customers, yet at the same time, ensure he had a large team in the kitchen, but he would ensure every single thing he would make would go through as per his instructions. It was a small bistro, but the attention to detail, not compromising on the quality, working very, very close personally, even during his pandemic and all those times, he was able to uh, ride the wave because uh, he had such strong connections with his customers. And sometimes he has done personal deliveries to people at their homes as long as the lockdown rules permitted and so on and so forth. So he was, he was able to really create that kind of distinctiveness. It's a small place, but with food quality, service quality, and the consistency through which he was able to deliver was, was unheard of in many, many situations. So a lot of times founders and, and, and people who are involved in this really go deeper down in these kind of situations. So how do we, how do we go about creating a, a go-to-market uh, viable strategy for the products and the services we have, you know? All of us know this. All of us know that India is no longer the India we knew. In last four years, five years, so much has changed in terms of not just demographics, but in terms of people's attitudes, behavior, their media habits, consumption patterns. Uh, and within that particular India, you have multiple Indias which are sliced after slice in many cases. Then you have shift happening between millennials, Gen Zs, and uh, which is the new one, alpha generation, I think. 
So forget the Gen Xs, the Gen Ys, and whatever. Now the very interesting shift in consumption and attitude has happened in Gen Zs, and it could be very important for all of you. If your target audience happen to be the younger generation to really try and understand. They're very different than millennials. They're very different than their parents. They're very different than the two generations below before them. And that's something which is extremely critical for all of us to really, really figure this out. And how do we go about looking at this particular generation, you know, and understand their attitude, behavior? So I have one interesting question to all of you. If you have a younger population as a target audience, which is between the age group of between 12 or 14 to 20 or 18, right? Let's look at 20, yeah. So it's people who are born between 2000 to 2020. Uh, sorry, between 2000 to 2010 or something. So people who are the age group of 12 to 20. Uh, how would you understand them as your target audience? What would you do to understand them? Don't tell me the world called research. The question is, what kind of research you will do? How will you understand them? Where would you get the data about them? How would you figure this out quickly? Okay, I've got some responses. Uh, Anand says by looking at what's trending for on the age group on Netflix. Dina says I'll figure out on Instagram. Okay, talk to people, schools and colleges. Okay, social media. What else? Forums like Reddit and Kura, okay. Direct conversations is Ani saying, okay. Uh, talk to people, Instagram, looking patterns in food and clothing, looking at what's trending, hashtags, languages, influencers. Okay, by data analytics from third party agencies. Uh, so you will find out what are they reading or you will article Sankit the same. Keyword for that age group on search engines, experience to create a relationship. Okay. Okay. By juice. Baiju's has a lot of data. Talking to the cousins, that age group and Insta Reels, okay. Now, a lot of you have said social media. Now, I have a secondary question to you on that. You would tell me about analyzing their social media behavior by putting what reels are they watching or what reels are they making or what are they consuming? Do you think that is an authentic data in terms of what are they showing to us or who they are in real reality? Is there a dichotomy there? Is there, a, is there something you will see that people are not necessarily the same in, on social media? versus what they are in their reality and what they want to pretend or showcase certain things to the larger world that who they are. And so do you think that that authenticity, where you can get that authenticity there? So how would you then reach out to them, talk to them, find out about them in the limited resources you have? What will you do? I was waiting for this and Daksh has said it. Yes, there's memes as well. Memes as well. 
So this is a, a tricky generation. This generation is not following the norms. This generation is, is not a rebel generation, but this generation is also very conscious about their environment, about the life, about their consumption. This generation is also not worried about asking questions and, and not forming our little non-conformists as well. Yet at the same time, this generation is very much rooted to the lives of their parents as well. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very interesting generation, which is, which is somewhere rooted in the, in, the, in, the, in the lives of their parents, yet at the same time have the distinct identity, distinct consumption, distinct way of looking at things and so on and so forth. Versus they were very different than the millennials and so on and so forth. So, you know, so that is something which you have to figure out in, 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 in multiple levels, there are certain market research tools and techniques which are available to you, which are useful for Gen Xers. There are certain things you could still do it in ethnography, observational research and, and, and analyzing big data. You could also look at something as a thick data, which is more, more on the consumer insight part of it. But this generation is on the move. So you really have to find out multiple personas, multiple kinds of, of ways through which you can gather data and triangulate that data because one kind of data will not help. So you really have to triangulate it, cross-reference it, finding out that biases are not coming in your own understanding. So, so this is where India is changing very, very rapidly in the socio-cultural context and socio-cultural context then leads to the consumption context, which is more important for you because your businesses are consumption led, because that's where you have to really figure that out. Right, so yeah, you do have an idea. You've been able to build that particular idea, but how do you go about then creating that white space for your idea, right? So, I'm sure within your own respective businesses, you've been able to identify some white spaces. Uh, I don't know about your business, but if you could just tell me two things, whether your business is a B2B or a B2C business or a D2C business, and what is the white space your business, your idea is trying to capture. If you could just write it down there on the chat. Only two things, whether it's a B2B or a B2C, or a D2C, or what white space you think you've captured. B2, B2C, yeah, and what white space? What white space? Emotion detection. Okay, so you are working on some software related uh, prototype where you could work it out and identify with yeah, B2B, B2C, but what is that white space? What is that idea? Fast charging, whether B2B, B2C, fast charging of what? And then B2C, removing burnouts, okay, no code, machine learning, digital transformation, uh, degree Celsius, private limited, say EV, gifting B2B, gifting for SANA, okay, move on, move on, move on, digital transformation, B2 government, okay, business to government, digital transformation services, Okay, move on, few more, few more. EVDC fast charging, okay, okay, good, good, good. Uh, B2B rehabilitation of whom? End-to-end -end strategic platform for SME growth, scaling, renewable power, Jagannath, okay, okay. Instant discounts, Kapil Yadav, okay. Farm to fashion, sustainable fashion marketplace. Okay. Marketplace for gardening services is a B2B. Okay. Video format course, drawing and painting, B2C. Okay. Fair enough. Good. I've got some idea about some of your businesses. Very interesting. Improving employee productivity, Sunil Kumar, increased profit of organization, too large, too big a situation, but yeah, maybe, you know, uh, 
Okay, let's let's look at it. Let's look at it. So my question to you would be, and you don't have to answer me. You have to answer yourself. That that is this is a a real white space. Do you think that uh, in in terms of your larger marketplaces, your competition, do you think that this is something which you've been able to identify as a, a, a real gap, and that gap is something which can can be then developed into a market. So is there, or do you already have a lot of competition already existing in some of those places? And the only way you can make some money would be to be doing it better than your competition. Uh, you know, so maybe maybe some of those things you could you could look at it, right? Okay, right. So my next question is about your, you know, understanding about what is the brand image and what is the brand identity. Brand identity is the way you want your customers to, want folks to perceive you. Style, tone, language, logo, tagline. And brand image is the ways customers actually perceive you. One is what do you want them to see you as in their head? How differentiating can you be? Versus how in actual terms people see you. I might want to showcase that I'm very stylish, I'm fashionable and whatever, but not necessarily. People might see me as pretender. People might see me as fashion laggard. People might see me that uh, I'm not. So what is it that, is there a dichotomy between what your image is, what your reputation is getting built, what people are believing in, in you, what kind of emotion they associate with you, what kind of reputation you've been able to build versus what is it they are trying, you trying to showcase to people, which are more tangible. What you're trying to showcase is more tangible in terms of logo, uh, identity, tagline, your languages, fonts, all that stuff. What says as your organization, as a brand, how are people seeing you, perceiving you? So a good exercise for you to do would be to make this two separate sets. One is your brand identity stuff where you put in your, your, your own idea about what do you intend to tell people? What do you think you are? And then if you've got certain set of unbiased people or certain set of first set of customers you already have, because some of you already have revenues, ask them about what do they think of you? How do they perceive you? And then try to find out, is there a dichotomy? Is there a, is there a gap between what is you want to tell people who you are versus how people see you who you are? And probably try to bridge that particular gap. And this is an exercise you don't have to tell me. This is an exercise you have to do it yourself because this is very, very critical. Your brand identity versus your brand imagery, what? customer see you as. The second filter, the second filter you have to put in, and this is not just theory, the second filter you have to put in, in this particular case, is that are you clear about who you are? And are people seeing you as who you are? So it, which means your, your value proposition, is it clear to people? Either it's B2B, B2C, B2G, G2B, whatever is the target audience and business model is, whosoever is your target audience and your target customers are, are you coming across to them in a very straight, simple format that this is what who I am, this is what I do, right? What is Nike? Nike is a branded uh, sports wear company, which makes people do things on their own whatever, 
versus Puma, more fashion oriented versus Adidas, more sports oriented. Three distinct identities have it's clear to people. Puma comes across as a non, it's, it's sports, but it's not heavily around sports. It's a lot of fashion there versus Adidas, which is a lot more sports than fashion. Compelling. What is the compelling reason why people would choose you, your services, your business over others? Because this is something which will be part of your tech presentation is about when you go to the market, your primary customers happens to be channel manager, channel map people, uh, maybe dealers, distributors, uh, maybe sometimes if it's a D2C. So what is the, what is the, what is the value proposition of something called Zepto versus Blinkit? Both of them are trying to give groceries in less than 10 minutes. So what is their primary reason should I should use Zepto versus I should use Blinkit or Groffers in that particular sense. The third is about consistency of your products or services. So our, your brand is, is it clear? Is it compelling? Is it consistent every single time? Every single time, nine out of 10 times people get you. Nine out of time, 10 times are people preferring you over others and why should they should be clear in your head? And nine out of 10 times, if you're providing, you've kept a service promise or a product promise, are you able to consistently deliver? That builds the brand, not the logo only, not the punchline, not the design of it. What matters to people is not who you are, but what do you do for them to make it consistent, just like Ababu Abbas? Nobody cares about go to shoe shine. People care about Ababu. What does he do? Shoe shine. He does it better than anybody else. And then his shoe shine is so good that every time people come in, it is one of the best in the system. Every single time he fulfills that promise. It's easier business, which is shoe shine. Your businesses are more complex. Your supply chain is complex. Your product proposition or software propositions are very complex. But then you have to provide that reason for people to trust you. Provide a reason for people to probably shift to you or do a, or try you out or do a trial for you. Why would they do that unless they have a compelling reason to do it? Not just because you happen to be a little better or you say you're better than others. No, you have to prove it to them. And that's something you have to ask yourself. You can't lie to yourself. You can say all these things to get funding. You can say all these things in my class. You can say all these things to your mentors, but deep down within your competition, you have to ask this because this is the sole reason why you should exist. Why should you exist as an organization? Just because you've got a great idea, you should exist. Not necessarily. The market is not that uh, uh, ambivalent towards you. They're ruthless. And you are in the market now. So we have to ask this question consistently every time we go to the market to reach out to people, saying that, are we really, really honest? Or are we telling a lie to ourselves just to be, you know, feel good about ourselves? I think we can't, we can't afford to do that. We can't afford to lie to ourselves. And hence, ask this question. Is your brand consistent? Is your brand compelling? To, to offer is a brand promise is clear. So clear that any dumb guy, any smart guy, anybody can get that. That is something which is important. Then internally, internally, you have to ask your employees, your founders, co-founders, people around you, these questions, very critical. What are your values for external consumers? What are your internal values? Very important. Do you follow that? You say we are, we are customer friendly, but are you employee friendly as well? Or you're exploiting your employees? You have to work that way. What is your unique personality and identity? Does it really stand out? Who are your consumers? Can we define that? Yes, B2B, yes. But within that B, who are those set of people? What is the... Uh, uh, distribution structure of that? Is it like FMCG structure or is it like durable structure? 
or is it like IT services structure? What is that business part is? Is it, are they institutional people? Are they PSUs? Are they large multinational corporations? Who are those set of people for whom, because their businesses, do you understand their businesses in, in software or, or, or IT services or manufacturing or even government, for example? Who are those guys? If you are into B2C, then is it your consumer defined only by demographics or is it by attitude or behavior? Is it by a little bit of psychographics as well? Is it, is it something which is coming out of understanding their socioeconomic background? Will that help? Are the older notions of ACC help anymore or they just pass away because nobody cares about it? Very critical one. What are your user experience touch points? What are your user experience touch point? How do people experience you? It's like that. You know, I'm a consumer. I'm a middle-aged, upper economic class consumer. I want to buy a shoe. There are a thousand ways I can buy a shoe. If I'm a brand conscious, I'll go to a brand's store. I'm not brand conscious. I'm a variety seeker. I'll go to a mall. Look at multi-brand outlet. Am I tech savvy, mobile hopping? I might not go anywhere, sit in my couch and browse and do it. Now, even if I'm doing those, what are my touch points? If I go to a Bata showroom versus I go to a Nike showroom versus I go to a Skechers showroom versus I go to an ASIC showroom, is the experience same? If I go to a Clark's, is it the same? Is it different? What am I seeking? How much time do I spend there? What kind of conversation I have? How many shoes I pick up? How many shoes I try? How many shoes I end up buying or not buying? Same goes in the online space as well. Am I going to Amazon searching thousand things? What am I looking? My algorithm should be able to tell me, am I looking at price? Am I looking at brand spread? Am I looking at colors? What am I trying out? I should be in a position to find out the user experience touch points. What are those touch points? Is it parking my touch point? Is it entry my touch point? Is my, is my, 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 my showroom manager at touch point? Who are those people? Are they trained enough? Are they really, really done doing a particular manner? So these are the ones you really have to find out. What are your touch points? Is it email your touch point? Is it WhatsApp a touch point? And what are those experiences people are having in the, during those moments of truth, small, small moments of truth where somebody is interacting with your touch point. It might be a journey, user journey touch point, might not get into the cash wrap transaction touch point, but it's extremely critical, extremely critical. Yeah. Brand delivery is greater than brand promise. You overcome it and under deliver is the worst thing can happen to a brand. More importantly, what are people seeking from you? Are they seeking quickness? Are they seeking perfection? Are they seeking speed? So today we have to find out in the larger business landscape you guys operate, what is it that we have that we would want to do? Define your consumers their journeys and personas journey very sharply. Who are these shopper personas? You know, is it a lady working in a middle-class household, has thousand things to do, has two kids? Define your personas. What does she watch? Is she a Gehraya type of a shopper or she is a Badhaido kind of a shopper? What are her interest areas in, in consumption? You know, you have to figure that out, those consumption of, because people are defined not by what they're buying their products, they're defined by who they are in totality. And that is something, and then within that larger totality persona, where do we fit in in their lives? Where do we fit in their lives? So that is something which we have to continuously keep finding and define them very, very sharply. So what are those very interesting things? You know, Sorry. Awareness.
consideration. So are they are they aware? Are they aware of you? It's like earlier model. We used to have something called when I was uh, a graduate student. We used to study something called the IDA model. Now it's called ACPSA, whatever. Attend awareness, interest, desire, and action. Now it has got something called awareness, consideration, purchase, experience, dissonance, post-purchase dissonance, good, bad, ugly, and then advocacy. So, and what are those channels? What are those channels through which people are able to reach out to you through internet, mobile app, email, SMS, voice? live face to face all that personas will have a very different kind of a user journey consumption journey purchase journey can we create that can we create this map and figure it out what are they doing what kind of transaction what kind of experiences they been able to build along are they are rational shoppers or are they emotional shoppers or are they somewhere in between some aspects are rational, some aspects are emotional. When it comes to pricing, they're more rational. When it comes to color, they're more emotional. Are we able to really, really figure this out from them? Then when you are building your story, when you're building your app, when you're building your website, when you're building a communication channel, you also have to figure this out. That do you have data? Where can you get this data? Do you have distribution structures? You're doing it yourself, you're doing it with partners. And what kind of communication you have through your content, through your collateral material, through your brochures, through your WhatsApp, SMSs, posters, TV ad, radio jingles, uh, advertising, mobile advertising, digital advertising. What kind of content is going? through which channel and are you able to get data of your consumers and analyze it and be and, and find out their behavior about certain things so that's extremely extremely critical so what do you need to focus on customer experience across touch points across touch points find out those touch points very 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 critical like for example in the whole segment, I've, I've, I've kept something called digital touch points and physical touch points, right? So how do I manage the customer touch point management, CTM? Very critical in the, in the awareness in digital touch points. I am doing, you know, online ads, email, billboard, search, landing page, blog, third party sites, purchase where website, mobile services, then later on, are they talking about, about you or not? In the physical space, am I looking at PR, in the radio, newspaper, read, print, word of mouth? Am I going to the store, looking at the store, checking out stuff? Am I calling people on, on IVR and others? Try Tata Sky IVR. It's the worst IVR you could ever find out. You know, So they're all very, very critical. They're all very, very critical. Now, this is where your money has to be balanced. Brand marketing, which is for long-term, high customer acquisition cost, and very high lifetime value also. But then, how much money you should put in brand marketing? How much money you should put in performance marketing? Because direct sale conversion, both are equal important between brand marketing and performance marketing. Your teams, your distribution, your money allocation on Google AdWords, search engine, uh, email marketing, call center is all performance marketing. Advertising, activation, larger billboards, uh, public relations, they're all brand marketing tools. But then through them, customer acquisition costs are very high, but customers' brand is being built. You can milk them over a period of time. Short term, you need sales, you need revenues, you need cash flows, and hence you need to get customers quicker. Performance marketing is critical there. What is the balance? You have to find 
You cannot have only performance marketing and not, not build the brand. You can't have long, long time brand building. You don't even survive if you don't have So you should also have a, 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 a quick sales through that, that customers come into you. You know, so that is very, very critical. Finally, for you, because it's a long-term thing for you, think through that how can you build a brand that all stakeholders love? Your all stakeholders does not mean only your consumers. The stakeholders are the founding team. The stakeholders are your employees. The stakeholders are your customers. Your stakeholders are the vendors of your vendors. Your stakeholders are uh, 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 policy people. Your stakeholders are, so there can be primary stakeholders, secondary stakeholders, tertiary stakeholders. Are people happy? Are people talking about you? They might not be direct consumers. Do you have a bunch of people who are positively disposed and say, yes, this is a brand, this is a new idea, this is something I want to talk about? Are your customers, your internal customers, which are employees, are they convinced about this brand? Are they convinced about this idea? Are they convinced about the growth? Are they convinced about that one day we'll make it big? If they are not, you might have to rethink your internal communication strategy. The consumers who bought from you, will they come back? Will they come back? Will they bring other set of people or not? Will they talk about you or not? If they talk about you, are they talking negative or are they talking positive? Are we antagonizing them through our strategies or policies saying that yeah, money policy eh? versus saying probably if you've committed a mistake, we want to do it again with you guys. At what time you say, no, stop, I can't bleed anymore. I can't sell on discount. So all those things are extremely critical that you're building this brand for life. Last but not the least, I think you've all taken up this beautiful journey of entrepreneurship. I envy you, or I wish I was your age in stage and in life and would have taken up such journeys again. But this is where the beauty lies. It's all about your journey, but you will have to be very, very critical to yourself. You have to ask important question to yourself. You have to be very, very honest towards self. You have to be very, very uh, ruthless uh, towards yourself in terms of your ability to do certain things and demand high performance from everyone, including yourself. So that is something which I thought I will have a quick chat, this one hour, not much. So before I go, and this I'll share this presentation with uh, the Lemon team, they can have it. Before I go, I've got another story for you guys. This is a story of a boy from Zimbabwe, who ran away from his home and landed in South Africa. Very quickly, he got into street crime. He got into street crime. And through street crime, he got into jail. And when he was in jail, when he was in jail, he realized that he was doing his life completely wrongly, you know. So what he did was that he started reading books. He started reading books in the jail. 
And while he was reading books, he realized that books can be his best friends. So when he came out of jail, he started begging people. I would say, you know, Are jail ke baad aake he's begging. Why is he doing this? Very interestingly, when he came out of jail, he started begging people that if they can donate him their used books. He said, if you read the book, you're no longer reading it, can you give it to me? So he started collecting books from people. Slowly, he had a large collection of books. So he created a small pavement store called the Bookworm Pavement Store. His name is Filani Dradla. I'm putting his details to you on the chat. It's called Pavement Bookworm, co.za. His name is Filani Ladla. And the best part about his life is that he reads up all the books he has got. He prepares the book review or the synopsis of the book he has already read. And he tells people the synopsis of the book review on the street. And he says, if you like the review, you can buy the book. So he picks up the book through begging, through donations. Now there is a book, is, is, there's a book which has come up in his name. In your free time, you can go to this uh, link called pavementbookworm.co.za and can read about his life and the work he does. And, and so inspiring, just like Bhutu Shushan, Ababu Abbas, that it teaches me, and probably it might resonate with you, that life does give you second chance. That is one. Second, if you've got an idea, I really don't need, you know, uh, something you can put to practice. Try out, trial, error, something will work. Last but not the least, be the hero of your own story. That's what I learned from this guy. He's a big brand. There's a movie might come out on his name today. And Filani Dradla, who was once languishing in South African jails, been able to make a second life out of it through the books. And he's the hero of his own life. He doesn't need any other Bollywood, Shollywood, Hollywood, Mollywood hero. He is the hero of his own life. I think with that, I'll close this session. I've already uh, overshot the time by 10 minutes. So my thank you to everybody uh, for, for a patient hearing. Uh, there is an email ID. I'm typing it down. You want to connect with me, with your ideas, uh, with anything you would want me to talk to you, discuss with you, uh, critique your work, help you connect with some funders, uh, write to me. You want me to, uh, to be the devil's advocate, uh, seek time from me on Zoom. And I would be more than happy to sort out your consumer customer insights. You want uh, me to help you with your uh, campaigns, with, uh, with your creatives, run it through me. Maybe uh, I can help you with copywriting. I can help you with some other stuff as well. I know I work with certain startups who help make branding and advertising for startups like you. I can connect them to you. They're part of another incubator I help. Uh, so small milate jao, large banate jao types. My life is all about creating this community. Uh, so you could do that uh, and uh, be in touch. And if some of you happen to be in Bangalore, I don't know how many of you are in Bangalore. I live in Bangalore. Uh, you could buzz me up sometime and we could catch up over coffee as well and discuss your ideas and thoughts further. I could refine it, help you refine it. That's my job. I'm a guy who chisel it with things. Okay, so thank you, all the best. And back to Amartya. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Dwayka sir, for joining us and for this session. Uh, like, hope these startups might have received some uh, like good, uh, good sort of, uh, uh, let's say, insights from you sure. uh, and they will use it in their startup journey somewhere or the other 
so thanks a lot again uh, so bye bye take care bye sir and i will i will i will email this presentation to ashwin ashwin will share it with you guys right away okay done see you bye bye thanks so moving ahead i would like to uh, invite our partner we have mr mrnal kakkar who is the incubation manager at ignite incubator co working space this is an uh, incubation firm based out of gujarat i would quickly invite him to share uh, his views mrnal sir if you are in the room like Uh, Mrnal sir, if you are in the room, please, uh, uh, like, uh, unmute yourself. Good evening, Amar sir. I hope I am audible. Yes, yes, you are audible, sir. Please, please proceed. Yeah. So, hello, all the stakeholders of this uh, awesome contest named Minopreneur Season Seven. Is that right? that is very much uh, actively managed and like uh, supported by lemon ideas so i i am thankful to the team lemon ideas for the execution of such a good startup event that will help to like take the startup ecosystem of the country on the forefront with uh, numerous ideas and their implementation with the right guidance and support so ignite being the flexible center or flexible incubation center associated with silver of university ahmedabad gujarat so we have been operating since 2017 which uh, which have come up to the wrong journey and till now we have graduated around 60 plus startups uh, including proof of concepts from the students and also the finalized ideas we also have some of the really good uh, doing startups into the market that are actively funded so ignite is associated with the government uh, startup assistance schemes in all the manners like from the student of a school to a individual of any years or like of any age that they can have, get the assistance from an incubation center we also have a panel of around 70 plus uh, mentors on our board and uh, investor board is also active from which uh, if not uh, startup wants to go ahead with the investor facilitation then we can help so like ignite uh, is also a partner of many flexip institution in, uh, in into the country like uh, with the isel of iit kharagpur uh, to like being a member with iwil new delhi so with this all the support of institutions and like uh, one of the remarkable institute uh, also organization named lemon idea so we are partner with them for this event and we uh, had a good response for uh, for the implementation and the success of this event so i would like to thank you all for being a part of it and hope uh, those who are selected or those who are shortlisted may learn something from the feedback you received uh, with the support of the team Yeah, that's all from my side. Thank you, Amartya, for having me today. Over to you. Uh, thanks, Manal sir, for joining and sharing the views. Uh, now, Ignite has supported us a lot in reaching out to the uh, startups in Gujarat, and uh, they they have been uh, like we look forward to more like associate with them for further uh, events as well. so i would quickly move to the second Amartya, topic just uh, just i would uh, put some thing in the chat box so let all the participant uh, get ideas from it wait a second sure mm -hmm. so meanwhile uh, uh, i would take the 
next topic of of the day digital armory uh, for this we have uh, i have i have put the links of our social media handles of ignite in the chat box so if anyone wants to connect with us through it uh, they are most welcome we will be glad to help you out in any way we can thank you sure to all these startups uh, like uh, ignite and there are other partners as well who are ready to extend a support hand uh, to you so hope this uh, details in the chat box uh, you, you will be using it uh, like you may you may connect with uh, mrinal sir or uh, maybe with ignite incubation and take it ahead so for digital armory I, uh, we have uh, uh, our ceo of innopreneurs uh, uh, mr krishnakant chaturvedi uh, I, i would quickly hand over this uh, platform to him to take this ahead krishnakant sir over to you uh hi everyone and thanks a lot amartya i hope everyone you must have enjoyed the session by dwari sir mr dwari kaunial he has been a uh, you know a mentor to me as well uh, i hope you must have got a lot of insightful uh, you know takeaways from his session around that particular topic let me quickly move ahead now from here and i'll be talking to you on digital armory or building your digital armory uh, you know in your startup and we'll be seeing like how can you integrate technologies in your day to day operations and nine different sort of aspects in your particular startup i know that you have been taking it for so long now but still if you can uh, we'll quickly build some energy before we actually proceed ahead for this particular program or this 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 particular session i would want you all to please open up your videos once so that i can see you at least so that i can see your faces and i can know that whom i am talking to please open your videos once i can see few of the family of faces that i've seen in few of the regional rounds have been present there so please open your video once and amartya i request you to please capture this in a screenshot so that this becomes a memory for us uh because this is live on youtube as well we'll be saving it for uh you know for our future references if you wanted to also visit you can actually go to the youtube channel any time and can see this particular boot camp there um uh, amazing nice to see you all hi all and i can see a lot of international participants as well so i'll try to keep this in english moreover uh because <coughs> i wanted our international participants uh, should also get help out of it the uh, the tech the technological tools that i'm sharing here today that i'll be sharing here today with you uh i'm i'm sure that this would have the relevance in your specific country also uh as far as i know rest it depends on the particular laws and you know uh, the operations of that particular tool into that country but maybe you can you know just quickly search that out or search certain sort of alternatives also for it so we'll quickly move ahead now if you want you can switch your video off if you wanted to keep it on that's good i can see your faces and do that so before we actually proceed ahead for this session i would want to uh, uh, you know first of all understand which city you come from maybe if if you can quickly mention your city name along with your country name quickly in the chat boxes and let us build this energy into this webinar today so i have only in only 45 minutes do i need to do i want to interact with you a lot but still looking at some other speakers also looking at you know uh the 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 program lined up i would want that you know i shall quickly finish it up in next 45 minutes okay so i can see here somebody from udaipur gurgaon goa bangalore from india okay few of the participants from bhutan as well bhubaneswar hyderabad nagpur gorakhpur amazing gmb intellect from coimbatore amazing they have seen it i've seen the particular uh, you know analysis of the teams the sector wise analysis also the stage wise analysis also before i come to this particular program but still i have quickly wanted to understand that who among them are present into this particular boot camp because not everyone attends it 
uh, you know only the ones who actually consider this as a valuable one they all they only come and uh, you know uh, get here with us amazing so i'll quickly pull my slides now um just a second okay so here you go and i'll be asking you a lot of questions see it's not like that i'll be coming and giving you certain sort of gyan and then going no it is not going to be the way at least in my session and i'm sure in your future uh, you know sessions of this boot camp as well i'll be interacting with you a lot and we'll be interacting around digital armory and we, uh, i'll be understanding your current way of functioning by using this tax stack for your particular you know a uh, startup see i am not going to interact with you very very specifically on the technological part because i do not know that which kind of technology are you integrating but i'll be talking to you on the basic level of functioning of a startup and what are you integrating for that so probably for accounts and for all other aspects of it i'll be quickly uh, be talking to you on that so without wasting any time uh let me know which tools are you using right now for your for running your startup which tools are you using right now what all tools are you using right now quickly in the chat boxes any tool that you can think of telly is one amazing excel is one figma notion canva okay vyapar ship rocket amazing g suit sheets pick cut ship level okay zoho one amazing wix okay pitch.com razor pay pages canva slack amazing vista convert whatsapp discord okay canva amazing instagram and all okay lucia again wix amazing for uh, for youtube audience who are watching us right now or who will be watching us this particular boot camp further i am so sorry i cannot you know uh, be able to share this chat box with you on the screen but uh, uh, maybe i am pronouncing it for you only so that you can refer to it so linkedin sales navigator okay clubhouse is one pinterest shopify amazing so see what i am going to do here for you is uh being running uh, you know innopeners and a team of a lot of people i have personally used or the startups in our ecosystem has used a lot of tools and what i did was i tried to you know gather them on onto one platform so that you could get helped out of it uh i call it you know moreover the navratnas for digital readiness so basically like akbar formed his own navratnas for managing his entire you know uh, i would say uh, empire that he had you should also build your digital tech stack for managing your entire startup that you have and these sort of tools i have actually uh, researched it a lot and tried and tested a lot of tools and i have i have come up with few of the tools around self management digital presence graphics team coordination marketing and communication sales project management payments and operations i think this completes all until and unless there is a technology related startup specifically which works on technology so there are startups those who are working specifically on technology it might not be relevant for certain aspects of their functioning but this particularly relates to a lot of the function of a startup right so we'll be talking around tools around self management digital presence graphics team coordination marketing and communication sales project management payments and operations although i can see a lot of tools there in the chat box you know already so photoshop corel draw adobe premium pro uh, and uh, adobe premier pro and all of the social media platform shopify pinterest and there are a lot of the references that you guys told me but i'll try to you know uh, kind of gather it all onto one uh, onto one slide so that you can quickly take a note of it if you want you can screenshot these slides also or anyway amartya and the team are going to forward you these slides as well or maybe a very uh, detailed note of it so that you can actually refer to this further as well so let us now go see what happens is uh, why we have kind of consolidated this all because pre at the pre good like in the pre corona phase there was very less attention on the digital readiness and when we call digital readiness it is not only 
taking your business online it is not only that it is everything everything that you do in your startup can it be done digitally so maybe the team coordination maybe maybe the emailing part can you automate that maybe the the calls part if you do a lot of calls in your you know uh um, like in your startup can it be automated maybe maybe it's the qualification of your lead part can it be automated so there are a lot of things which we need to reconsider each and every function that you are currently doing manually can it be automated and what is the cost involved and i am very much happy to share with you all that uh, during this corona phase there was a compulsive attention on digital readiness and that's where it also uh, you know i have i have also got a chance to put an attention and whatever tools that i'll be sharing with you here 80% of these tools are free to use 80% of these tools are free to use they all are the freemium model um not all most of them are on the freemium model and some of them are free to use so maybe if you go towards uh, where uh, using it uh, like on a very deep note level then only you need to purchase it otherwise it is it is actually free to use right so let me let me talk about few of the self management tool and i also use these tools a lot i am sure that you also must be using it a lot so i start my day with google calendar and i end my day with google calendar i use evernote for structuring my particular day and then there comes a lot of time uh, you know we cannot be able to monitor our time where is that time particularly going and how much time are we wasting so maybe uh, you know to monitor your time and for the purpose of uh, seeing and a very detailed analysis of your time you can use smarter time your hour and clockify these are few of the applications which you can install in your mobile phone and it just request a login uh, you know uh, a log of your time you can actually do that for 25 hours i'll not say that you do it for 7 days 21 days or so or so you just do it for 24 hours and you will realize that how much time you're devoting where and what exactly is the percentage of time that you're devoting for your startup which will give you a lot of insights for your self improvement for your self management and then there comes see nowadays we all are sitting on our screens right and moreover it's like google chrome or safari that we spend our time on so a lot of time when you open we we open a lot of new windows and it becomes very very necessary that when you open this new window it should either motivate you that is number 1 or should should refresh uh, should refresh you right so there is one particular tool which does this right the name of this tool is momentum it actually gives you a plugin for google chrome and safari browser which actually refreshes you and make you productive by motivating you it has the uh, you know pomodoro uh, tool uh, integrated into it so maybe you can manage your time there only you can see that when have you started your day how much percentage of day uh, you know you have already lost or what is what is being left you can uh, i mean you can actually customize it according to your own need so this is how you can get refreshed with momentum this is about the self management only let me quickly move ahead to the more uh, detailed part now which is team coordination so a lot of you are using um, like like a lot of uh, i'll not use the u word here i'll know i'll use the us word here so a lot of us use whatsapps you know to manage our teams be it reports number 1 be it you know uh, the delegation number 2 be it the timely reports i'll strongly recommend you to stop using whatsapp right we for our internal coordination for our internal team coordination at lemon hardly use whatsapp until and unless it is very very necessary though we have some groups but until and unless it is very very necessary we hardly use it a lot of our a lot of our top level executives they are actually not on whatsapp because see the problem with whatsapp is it actually consumes a lot of time through distractions right so let's say if you are texting something to your team member and he receives a message from his girlfriend right he would be distracted for 5 minutes or 10 minutes or so so i would suggest stop using whatsapp for your work coordination or team coordination there are some other tools like teams or slack which you should be using a lot of you have posted this in the chat box that you are already using slack maybe you can keep doing it but to the people who are not using slack try it up right who are not using teams 
try it up at the least give it a try and figure it out that how can you better integrate this for your team coordination right and for meetings i think this you have already been doing it so i'll not cover much of it here so please it's my humble uh, request to you and a very good suggestion stop minimize the use of whatsapp i'll not say that stop using it or completely restrict using whatsapp no it can it is actually not possible you have to be there but minimize the use of whatsapp and start using tools like slack and microsoft teams more for your team coordination right then comes the project management right so a lot of time we have a lot of ideas right i also and a lot of our team members also we think a lot of things and even we we as entrepreneurs are the factory of ideas right so i i say this i mean every 5 minutes you must be getting a new idea oh we can do this oh we can do that oh i can do this oh i can do that how do you manage it is a is a skill so basically you cannot execute all of the things at one time right it needs a proper mindset it needs a proper time of you executing something at certain point of time because every execution needs some resources needs some you know time commitment from your end so what we do for ideation whenever you get an idea try to mind map it right you save that mind map there is a tool called mind meester and there are a lot of tools if you use you know if you are if you are on apple ecosystem you will find a lot of mind mapping tools there if you are on windows ecosystem or android ecosystem or chromebooks ecosystem uh you will find a lot of mind mapping tools there so these are the mind mapping tools you can you can actually save this is my strong suggestion to you all you can actually save one of the mind map around your startup again you, you can keep it saved for all of your time so i mean whenever you get some new idea go to that mind map again figure it out that where you can put it up right and that's where you build a mind map for ideating around your startup or maybe for ideating for any sort of new project right for, for like in our ecosystem as well and in at lemon also we do use asana for managing a specifically a particular project right so asana is a very good tool i mean if you have not been using it please do start using asana asana is free to use until an extent so it's again in the freemium model mind meester is also free to use it's also again on a freemium model or maybe you can use meester task and mind meester it's from a same company for managing your projects and for ideating around it so we prepare a lot of our presentations on mind meester right so a lot of our projects uh, uh, like uh, we kind of uh, presentations we use mind meester only and we we present through mind meester only and and i would say the mind mapping tools only because it saves a lot of time right so whenever we kind of you know uh we use uh, i would say when whenever we ideate something put it on the slides uh you know put it in a manner that it looks presentable it consumes a lot of time but then when you do it on mind mapping tool it actually saves a lot of time for you and you have a ready made presentation with you which you can go in front of the team and can present it also this is for your project management only right for internal coordination and all because it's a strong suggestion in one of the advice by duari mr duarika onyal also and our other mentors as well that you should not spend a lot of your time in aesthetic the you know uh, or i would say in making your slides look good for your internal communication because internally you can present you know you just need to communicate your ideas so why you should waste time for preparing your slides aesthetically good right it's actually not needed you can actually use any of the mind mapping tools and you can quickly go there and save your time and move ahead so mind meester is one and asana is number two which you know i would strongly suggest you to use for the project management purposes speaking about the digital presence it is needed so if you need any of the static website or i it will not go i updated these slides around 6 to 8 months back uh wix actually work with static websites more but if you are developing an e-commerce store or something like that sometime uh i would not suggest you to actually develop it on wix 
for a longer period of time however if you want to keep it live for around 3 to 4 months or 6 months or an year on the same tax stack you can do it but what happens with wix is when the traffic increases uh the the performance of that website particularly it ultimately decreases but it generally happens a, a very uh, you know a very rarely but still if you are working on a full blown mode if you are uh, if you are on the early traction stage or in the growth growth stage you should try you know building your own tech stack maybe uh, wordpress is a very very good example you can actually try developing your websites to wordpress or maybe uh, the coding your websites right wix help you to develop your websites when you are not functioning on a full blown mode so let's say if you have 10000 20000 30000 people coming in on your websites every day it might stuck up right even uh, but yes if you have around 10000 uh, you know sort of traffic for uh, i would say for uh, uh, like on a monthly note then you can then you can keep using wix there is no harm of using it the advantage of using wix is that it becomes very handy very easy to edit to change and to do everything right but yes uh, there is no threshold i mean uh, yes uh, so uh, i have a query in the chat box by uh, ms ani shankar that 30000 traffic is when one can move you say uh it, let's not keep it on a traffic threshold uh miss shankar because uh, see what happens is uh it's not you cannot actually measure it on traffic threshold because wix has uh, wix actually has a lot of plans and they are improving it a lot right but uh it is just like when you have a lot of pages on wix let's say 50 60 live pages on your website and when you have when you have a lot of traffic coming in it might stuck up so i would suggest you if you are building your website for the first time look keeping it very aesthetically looking good you can develop it on wix there are a lot of experts though they can help you you know improving your page speed and your the 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 the, the performance of your wix website there but yes if it is stucking for you if it is you know if it is not performing good you can then move to your own tech stack so this is what the suggestion is right until until it is working for you it's good because wix becomes very handy for you even you come if you come from a non tech background you can any way very easily use wix and edit your websites and keep your changes done right and but because once you develop it and you have a dependency on a developer right and then when dependency is there it takes a lot of time a lot of efforts a lot of cost for even a minute level of changes so wix is what you can use in that sense then comes the insta page so insta page is one of the very good tool which i have come across so a lot of products that we actually market at lemon we we use insta pages right so we go to insta page we develop a landing page there and then we are good to go for any of our digital campaign be it ads be it email campaign be it sms campaign or anything right so insta page is something which i would recommend if you are developing only the landing page for any of your product for any of your uh, you know marketing campaigns if you are doing that do use insta page right because it helps you creating very good aesthetically good looking uh, landing pages in a very short span of time i mean i still remember i created one of the page in 10 to 12 minutes of time and started our digital campaign at lemon at some point of time right so insta page becomes a very good uh, optional i would say alternative for you to build landing pages for your products and for your marketing campaigns right so this is around your digital this was around your digital campaigns now comes the marketing and communication so before actually sharing this i would first of all want to understand that how many of you have been using these sms tools do you use bulk sms tools do you guys use bulk sms tools quickly in the chat boxes do you guys use bulk sms tools bulk sms i'm not speaking about the emails here but the bulk sms tools amazing see what happens is i'll not i do not have any idea around the rules and regulations around telecommunications of other countries but for indian participants i'll share it 
इट इज वेरी वेरी टफ फॉर यू टू नाउ सेंड एनी एस एम एस आउट देर राइट बिकॉज इट द गवर्नमेंट इज मॉनिटरिंग इट अलॉट राइट बिकॉज ऑफ दिस फिशिंग एस एम एस इज एंड ऑल द गवर्नमेंट इज बिल्ट एन एंटायर सिस्टम राइट दैट यू यू हैव टू गेट इट अप्रूव थ्रू अ गवर्नमेंट वेबसाइट दैट दे हैव वेन द टेम्पलेट इज अप्रूव देन ओनली यू कैन सेंड दीज एस एम एस एस टू एवरी वन इफ दैट एस एम एस इज एक्चुअली नॉट अप्रूवड ऑन द गवर्नमेंट पोर्टल विच इज द ट्राई पोर्टल this sms will not get delivered fully i mean the delivery rate of these sms is would hamper but there is one tool i have come across and it's a very very prof these are very very professional guys and they simplify this process a lot the name of this tool is text local they function in india i am not sure whether they are present in some other countries or no but for indian participant i am specifically sharing this that you may use the text local thing right so this text local they simplify the process a lot right even you get a dedicated account executive there which helps you going to a personal note as well uh you know for you to structure everything around sms for you but you the the the, the sms it should work for you right you should not spend money uh, just like that it should work for you like for us at lemon we have uh, we use a lot of our sms marketing campaigns right because see what i think is slowly slowly the world is leaving sms marketing and that's where the opportunity comes in that you should enter it up right so using the text local tool they all they also offer around 1000 credits or so so that you can i think the minimum subscription is 100 credits also so maybe 100 credits you can opt out for you can select a sample data for yourself and you can try sending these smss if it is working for you right because that's where you can do the marketing campaigns right uh harsh is asking text local can do auto smss also yes they can do auto sms as well not an issue you can there are a lot of uh, you know uh, i would say options available there you can you can actually send the links also in that sms which becomes the clickable link so generally when you send sms through a local vendor these links are not clickable the delivery rate hampers a lot you know the clicks rate hampers a lot and text local introduced a new technology also that you can actually track by integrating something they have you can actually track that how many have opened up your smss so this tracking is now also available with text local right by the way this is not sponsored this is just a suggestion since we have been using text local so i would suggest you also to use to try this tool once give it a try once for our international participants for emails right emails mailchimp is one which offers you free emails until a uh, email list of around 2000 emails i am sure if you are into email marketing you all must have got your accounts banned is it the case if you are doing email marketing for around an year or so you must have got your accounts banned was it the case with you has your accounts being banned or restricted on mailchimp or maybe on convertkit or something like that quickly in the chat boxes at any point of time if your accounts get banned please let me know because see since i have been using email marketing a lot i have been using these tools a lot it happened a lot of time with me that every time i i create an account a mail chim doesn't allow me to you know send these emails right and it restrict the account why does it happen let me tell you what mail chim does is it provides you a space of around 2000 contacts for free correct so what happens is what what mistake do we do i'll quickly introduce you the, this to you 2000 contacts what you say okay if i have 2000 space what i'll do is i'll uh, first send it to 2000 contacts then i'll delete them and then i'll again upload 2000 new contacts and then i'll again send it so when you upload your contacts and delete it and upload new contacts and you you do it frequently this ultimately the mailchimp algorithms bans your account these algorithm ban your account right and this is what it happens the second reason is so so you if you are uploading the data for the very first time that is like a crm right you should keep your data there you should not delete it up 
So you should build your email list there, and until and unless you are very much sure that okay, this data is not going to perform for me, then only you delete that data. Until and unless you are not sure, do not delete the data because it has a negative impact on the algorithms. That is number one. The number second is should you should include your contact details. That is your address, your websites, and your emails at the footer. of your emails right or your social buttons that is the facebook youtube linkedin these sort of links right you should have your contact details in the footer of your emails if it is not there the algorithms they will fetch it and it has a negative impact there if you do if you do these two things very very clearly you have a very less chances of uh, you know avoiding this account ban the second thing is in every country like in india we have certain sort of red flagged words right like in sms if you put win right if you put uh, if you put uh, money these sort of words these are red flagged words so in case if you put win in the sms your sms will go to a monitoring authority and it it is it has a very high chances that it will not get delivered it will get banned right number 1 similarly if you put the similar sort of words in your subject lines of your emails it like it is likely to have a uh, you know bad impact on the algorithms a negative impact on the algorithms and that is also a reason that why we have we face these account bans on these emails tools right so you can find this list i mean you can find this list of these red flagged word for emails and for sms is easily over the internet you can just search it up so there are a lot of two a lot of words like this there are around 100 200 words listed over there you can just make sure that you should not use these words there in your content right not in sms is either in sms is or in in your in the subject lines of your emails you should never use these red flag words every country has it right uh, so anish ankar from astu eco shared a case study there my product seed bombs got stuck in fbi ads validation and figured it out because of bomb we made it seed ball finally yes so there are certain sort of words that are actually banned over the internet so you should actually restrict using those particular words and you you can easily find these words out right you can easily found find these words out over the internet just a discount discount is one of the word that you should never use right it has a negative impact on the algorithms because our entire internet functions on algorithms right and then it is not gmail the third tool it is not gmail it is actually gmas how many of you have used gmas before quickly in the chat boxes Have you used Gmas before? Have you used Gmas before? If not, I'll suggest you to use it. A very very good tool replacing Mail Merge. So see what happens in Mail Merge. You cannot you cannot attach documents to it. You cannot attach attach documents in Mail Merge, right? But in Gmas, you can attach documents. Number one. you can only send one email to one person in uh, you know you can only send uh, an email to a person in in mail merge right you cannot keep somebody in cc but in gmas you can you cannot you cannot feed the automated reminders in gmails aap automated reminder mail mail merge mein nahi dal sakte you cannot feed the automated reminders in mail merge but in gmas you can feed the automated reminders so maybe let's say if you are running a b2b campaign how it helps i'll quickly tell you if you are running a b2b campaign right and you 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 are running this campaign with let's say around 50 odd people right 50 odd schools or maybe companies out there and you want that okay if i'm sending this first email i should keep this id in cc i should attach these documents and i should be able to post around six follow ups right i should be able to get uh, you know six uh, i should be able to post around six follow ups 
and these six follow up should go on this and this date and when i'm sending the first follow up this content should go when i'm sending the second follow up this content should go when i'm sending the third follow up this content should go so you can feed the content as well in gmas and it's a very very good tool very effective tool free to use for 50 emails a day free to use until 50 emails a day and 50 emails are enough i mean if you wanted to go you know uh more than it uh, you can go to go go with the premium plan as well so a weber and uh, gmas i'll prefer gmas search more because gmas i've personally used i've been using it for around 3 years now so gmas is one of the tool which saves a lot of time it it resolves everything at one click right that's number one number two that you must be getting a lot of email campaigns uh in your you know in your uh, inbox is also maybe by a lot of training companies maybe by a lot of you know educational companies that when you open something you get some else uh, you get something uh, you know you 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 get some other communication is e- uh, like an email and then when you do not open it you get some other communication in your email how do they do it do they feed every time they sit on they 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 sit on their email dashboard on send you the email no they do it only once in a day matlab uh, once in a month or so or once in a quarter or so they feed these email templates in the system and then they build a process map so the entire process map you can build right mail one if somebody opens the mail one which email you need to send if somebody do not open uh, you know does not open the mail one uh which email you need to send you can actually map this entire process there and the tool name is drip so drip is the name of the tool which you can use which is very very famous it is for email marketing drip so using drip you can build your process map around emails right so let's say if i am doing a, a a b2c or maybe d2c campaign for my brand right so let's say if i'm i am doing it with 10000 odd uh, email list who, who have been my subscribers so now i can build this entire process map and run this campaign for a month two months or three months with only one day of effort right i just need to send one day i just need to sit one day build all of these templates and just need to feed it on drip and drip will do the rest of the things for me and the analytics are also available right so that's what you can do with drip rest of all of your you know uh, emails need there is one tool i mean mailchimp it has a lot of complexities to use in terms of banning your account and you know there are a lot of formalities they want you to you know restrict to but then there is one tool called convert kit this is very very handy tool you may use it for your uh, email campaigns there are a lot of tools i mean there is sendgrid there is a there, there are a lot of tools right constant contact send grid and all but there are c- convert kit is something which i find very very lenient easy to use and very very easy to uh, uh, you know um, um um i would say very very easy to refer to when it comes to complexities or meeting their legalities and all so this is how you may use the all of these tools for your emails the third one comes for leads right so let's say i have i do not have a very specific idea on the pricing part but there is some system called ivr system right and this ivr system are being used in two ways so um this ivr plus plus call center routing this this can become an entire marketing campaign i'll quickly give you an idea see ivr calls how it helps so let's say if somebody calls your helpline number in your company right it should give them a very automated robotic voice first that okay if you want to talk to the operations department press this number if you want to talk to the marketing department press this number if you want to talk to you know the sales department press this number and all like that you can you can actually build that up uh, i think it cost you between 30000 to 50000 odd indian rupees uh, for an year or so for certain call volume this is what the last pricing i'd inquired for from one of the service provider but then there are a lot of companies over the internet which provides you this ivr tools and you can work out for the pricing accordingly but if you are using it for marketing and communications you can actually use this call center routing tip once right so how it happens is let me tell you so we call it bulk call service as well 
So let's say if you have a data of subscribers of around, let's say 2000, 3000 odd subscribers, or maybe a 10,000 odd subscribers, it can, it can give them a call, right? It can, it, it actually can give them a call an automated call that, okay, I am so-and-so from so-and-so company. If you are interested in talking to our, to our executives right now, press one. And if they press one, the call get connected to your call center directly. If it, if it does not connect also then you get some input that this person has pressed one and you can refer to that data that who all have pressed one. You can pull out that data from that system and, you know, call them again or maybe process them again. There is one case study of Dabur, right? Dabur made approximately 60 crores in revenue from the, from using this particular technique called IVR plus call center routing. What they did is there is one, 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 uh, one product which Dabur has launched for the regular checkup right for the regular checkup of uh, of of people it was way back in 2011 or 2012 they actually launched launched this product so what was what was happening at that point of time was uh, they they by by the way they still do it so what was happening at that point of time uh, they were only targeting housewives only housewives that too within a time frame of around 2 pm to 4 pm 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. They only they were only targeting housewife and there was an automated call that was going all around India. And it says, Kya aapke ghar mein bhi bimariyan, bimariyon ka prakop rehta hai? It was in Hindi, by the way, for our international participants, I'll translate it further. But then uh, the, 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 uh, actually the template was, Kya aapke ghar mein bhi bimariyon ka prakop rehta hai? Agar aap apne ghar ko nirogi banana chaate hai, to aaj hi daabar ke doctor se baat kariye. डॉक्टर से बात करने के लिए एक दबाई है जैसे ही वो एक दबाते थे वंस दे प्रेस वन द कॉल गेट्स कनेक्टेड टू देयर कॉल सेंटर डबल कॉल सेंटर वेयर इन देयर आर सर्टेन सॉर्ट ऑफ कॉल सेंटर एग्जीक्यूटिव सेट्स राइट एंड दे वर टॉकिंग टू देम ऑन टू अ चेकलिस्ट सो डॉक्टर्स गिव देम अ चेकलिस्ट टू चेक व्हाट दे हैव बीन ईटिंग एंड ऑल एंड ऑल एंड ऑल सो विद दिस दे सजेस्ट देम फॉर अ चेकअप that you should go to a nearby laboratory. So these are our, you know, collabor- these are the laboratories in collaboration with us. You can actually go there and get your checkup done. So these housewives now force their, uh, you know, uh, their family or maybe their husbands to go to for to go for a complete checkup over there, right? And that's how they made a 60 crore revenue way back in 2012 from this particular marketing campaign, right? Only from referrals. They were not having their own laboratories, by the way, only from referrals, they made this much of revenue, right? For our international participants, I'll quickly repeat that script again. It, the script says they were only targeting housewife between 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. because that's what the time they were moreover free. The script says, um, are you also, are you also very much frustrated with, uh, with, you know, with, with the medical complexities in your own house? Get yourself disease, get, get your house disease free, get your team, get your family members healthy for to, to consult to a doctor press one. So this is what the, the, you know, the particular marketing campaign says, and this is how they, they have generated revenue. So there are a lot of tools already available in the market over there and you can use them. Right. And then there comes Facebook messenger. See, Facebook messenger has a lot of power, right? You don't underestimate the power of Facebook messenger. And you don't underestimate the power of Instagram direct messages, right? There are a lot of automated tools available, which actually you can use. There is one tool by the name of send monkey, that tool you can use for automating your Instagram messages. So let's say when somebody says, when somebody says, I want to attend, or I am interested in your chat box, this tool can actually send an entire message to that particular person in the direct message on his comment only. And that sort of automation is now possible, right? If somebody is commenting on your Instagram profile, on your Facebook profile, these tools can send them the messages directly into their, into their inboxes. These tools have some subscription charges for sure, but then you can, you, you, you can actually search that out, right? So uh, by the way, on Facebook messenger, also you can build the entire chatbot for you to, you know, talk to somebody. So Facebook messengers offers you this, right? That you can build, you can build a process map around some messages, right? When somebody is sending this message, how you need to reply when somebody is sending this message, how you need to reply, you can explore that and get it done. 
करेक्ट सो दिस वॉज ऑल अराउंड मार्केटिंग एंड कम्युनिकेशन फॉर एस एम एस टेक्स लोकल फॉर ई मेल्स मेल चिम कन्वर्ट किट एंड जी मास फॉर लीड्स देर आर सर्टन सोट ऑफ आई बी आर सोल्यूशन एंड फॉर एंगेजमेंट यू कैन यूज फेसबुक मैसेजर देर अ लॉर्ड ऑफ ऑटोमेशन टूल्स अवेलेबल फॉर ऑटोमेटिंग योर डायरेक्ट मैसेजेस ऑन फेसबुक एंड इंस्टाग्राम करेक्ट देन कम्स द पेमेंट्स पार्ट राइट uh then comes the payments part see for payments insta mozo and razer pay these are the two these are the two you know payment gateways that we have right now in india for the respective countries i'm not sure how online payments functions in your country but i think paypal is actually available everywhere so you can keep using paypal but for indian startups let me tell you something cash free has introduced a lot of payment modes which might be very very helpful to you right how it offers is even if you have a product right even if you have a product which cost approximately let's say 10000 rupees correct and your customers cannot pay you 10000 rupees at once what you can do is you can go to this cash free dashboard and you can do a mandate with your customer for paying this 10000 rupees over two equal installments or maybe over five equal installments in the coming months and what does what does this e mandate means in india this e mandate means that with my debit card i can actually subscribe to your product and if i subscribe it will automatically auto debit my account for five subsequent months correct so this auto debit facility for e mandates it's i think it's a it's a boon for startups it's a boon for startups why because if you have a product which costs more wherein your uh, your customers are actually asking you for emis you can use this product by cash free right e mandating product wherein you can actually kind of con- convert that particular amount to emi right so they charge obviously they charge something for it so they charge 7 rupees for every transaction and for doing the e mandate so every time that amount get deducted they will charge 7 rupees and there is some uh, i think 1 or 2 percent of fee also that they actually charge for it but i think you can price price your product accordingly then right so if you have a very high paying product you can use you can explore cash free they also offer the upi auto debit facility so if anybody is actually not comfortable for giving you the e mandates through their debit cards they can actually do the, the, this e mandate through upi pins as well right so with an upi pin you can avail this auto debit facility from their accounts directly so this is the facility kind of new payment modes that are now emerging in india and you can very well take the advantage of it if you have a very high paying product else razer pay works very well if you have something let's say if you're working in e-commerce we wanted to do one time transaction and all right so razer pay works uh, amazingly well but when you have a uh, when you have you know Uh, a dedicated e-commerce pro- product, a product which is a very much high priced. I would suggest you to explore cash free also once, because cash free it's amazingly good. It is working for us really, really, really well, and for our ecosystem startups as well. So this is all about payments. Then comes graphics. So graphics, Canva, you all are aware of. Canva is one of the tool which has which has replaced the graphic designers. you know all across the world right so canva you can use it for generic graphics and for videos there is one tool called adobe spark it is an online tool you can go to their website adobe spark you can search it up you can go to that online website and you can edit the entire video online that sort of ecosystem they offer you that sort of tech stack they offer you right so you can go to their website and this is amazingly well a lot of our videos we have actually edited even our educational videos we have actually edited using adobe spark right and it offers you a lot of templates as well so adobe spark is one of the tool and in short to you we all must be aware of in short is another tool which is available on android uh, you know um, like play store also and apple app store as well Uh, which you may use for for sort of video editing and all canva you all must be aware of so canva you can use for all your graphic needs now comes what 
for the sales part. So in sales, there are a lot of things, right? So for CRM, in case you are using it for CRM only, just for keeping the record of your customers, maintaining a relationship with them, sending them the automated, you know, reminders and emails and SMSs, you can use HubSpot. That's number one. There are, uh, there are, there, there, there is a CRM which Zoho also offers. So you can use that as well for sales intelligence. If you wanted to actually deep dive into some data, you can use LinkedIn sales navigator, Owler, Adapt and Inside View. All of these tools works for the B2B sales more. So for B2B sales, you can actually go and explore these tools for accelerating your sales, right? That means for getting more conversions out there, you can use Mailshake, Outreach, and Reply.io. These are very amazing tools. I mean, I would suggest you to go to these website once and create your account and explore these tools if it works for you. For sales gamification, for motivating your employees, right? Because let's say if you have a team, if they aren't motivated, you can actually gamify their entire sales experience, right? And you can do that with Ambition and Zoho Motivator. There are certain sort of tools available in the market for that. For analyzing your sales analytics, you can use Datapine and Aviso. They offer a lot of integration to your sales processes. You can do that and you can actually work really, really well there. Uh, then for documents tracking, uh, you, can, you can use Prospify and click to contract, right? who uh, uh, so basically when you are sending a proposal to somebody you can actually send these proposal through these tools so that you get some analytics also that when that person is opening this document where this person is moreover attentive on what part of that document is moreover attentive whether it was page number two the header part of page number two the footer part of page number two or the mid section of page number two where it was attentive where that person was attentive you can actually track this entire data using this document tracking tool prospify and click to contract right and then comes the account based marketing you can use the engageo and six sense these are the two tools for automating your sales or for build, generating your sales on an automated mode, you can use autopilot or active campaigns and for customer service, because this is one part wherein customer needs to talk to you, talk to you again and again for any sort of, you know, things they have for any sort of queries they have, you can use front live agenda and Zendesk. These are three of the tools for automating your customer service thing, right? So it has lot of, a lot of tools listed over there. You can screenshot this slide and right away once you finish this bootcamp today, you can go, you can one by one go to all of these tools and can understand this, that what do, what all do these tools provide and what all, how, how you can use it up for your sales benefit, right? Now, let us go to operations, right? So for operations, you guys must be using Google ecosystem for sure, which is Google Drive, Google Docs, Google Slides and Sheets, right? Calendar, there is one more like Keep and then Tasks also. And then G Suite also you can subscribe so that you can record your, I would say, uh, Google Meet recordings as well. Google Meet meetings you can then record, right? For, for digital footprints, I'll not speak here for general office operations since we have been, we have compelled to go digitally. We, we have to go digital, right? So we have all started using it. But for managing your social media accounts, because see what happens is you cannot go every day and post on your social media accounts, right? It consumes a lot of your mind share. So for managing that, what I'll suggest you to use it, use Buffer. Buffer is a tool wherein you can schedule all of all of your posts and you can actually post it on different, different platforms altogether at once. So let's say if I can actually schedule on all of my kind of uh, social media handles to, by using Buffer very, 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 very easily, right? And I can actually schedule my comments also. And I can, I can literally manage all of my social media handles through one dashboard through buffer, right? So buffer becomes a very, very amazingly good tool for managing all of your social media accounts at once, specifically for IG. Then for accounts, if you are using tele, if you are using anything else, I would suggest you to use QuickBooks if you have money to pay, because QuickBooks say you can directly file your GST also, right? And it is cloud-based. So maybe if you are sitting right now in Delhi, 
or maybe in any other country right and if you wanted your accounts to be managed by an account person who is sitting in some else uh, you know somewhere else he can actually he cannot get access to to your tally because it is actually located in your in your local device right in your local uh, computer but then when you use quickbooks it is on cloud it is very very easy you can generate the invoice accordingly you can send the automated invoice follow ups also through quickbooks only right and then when you do not have money to pay you can use wave accounting because quickbooks is paid but wave accounting is free wave accounting offers the similar feature like quickbooks but it does not offer you the 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 you know the 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 direct gst filing and all that that feature you do not have but the all of the rest of the uh, features are already available there in wave accounting right quickbooks offers you a lot of things it can fetch your account balances also directly through your current accounts and whatever transactions you are making in your current account it can directly log to your to your accounts to your ledger to your transaction sheet so that you need not to reconcile your brs we call it bank reconciliation statement right you do you need not to sit on your brs and reconcile it no you need not to do that it is automated already right so quickbooks offers you a very good solution if you are managing your accounts there harsh is asking is buffer free yes buffer is free for i think three of a uh, three of the accounts if you manage more than three accounts you need to purchase certain sort of subscriptions from there so i hope you must have got a, uh, a very good orientation around managing your social media accounts and for for managing your accounting as well right so from my session today i hope that you will also start forming your navratnas like akbar did emperor akbar did right for uh, for managing his own empire and these all these all tools are actually the juice of our years and years of research and our years of years of you know tri trials and testing and whatever tools i have i have pasted here i have shown you here these all are tried and tested you will receive it in your in your or like on your emails so this is how you can man you can self manage yourself for you can you can use a lot of tools for digital presence graphics team coordination marketing and communication sales project management payments and operations and that's all uh from my end until here if you have any questions related to this please do post it otherwise do post the feedback for this particular session if you have any question from me until here for building your digital armory basically do ping me here in the chat box otherwise let me know your feedback for this session particularly for the feedback uh i would request you to please do it in the chat box and with this uh if i can if you have any question i am here to answer it for a minute more rest you will be having a lot of great speakers moving um, going ahead we are, i think this boot camp is being scheduled for 5 days right and all of these 5 days we have put in a lot of our efforts i still remember that it has been in our discussions right there were speakers list there were speakers finalization there were content finalization and all of the things which we actually did for you know for uh, for bringing this 5 days boot camp to you right so i would suggest you to attend this completely for the next 5 days thanks a lot and thanks a lot everyone i hope you must have got something from my session today i hope you must have got insights from my session today it was just a session to you know to let you know that how can you build your own tech stack using the third party tools it need it is it, it it is not needed that you should develop your own applications all together everything is available over the internet and you can they very well take the advantages of these particular things right so thanks a lot everyone with this i'll hand it over to amartya amartya over to you now and before amartya uh, ping us here i would like to connect with you all on linkedin as well 
so i am by the name of krishnagan chaturvedi on linkedin so although i am pasting my linkedin profile link here in the chat box i look forward to connecting with you all on linkedin and let's keep connected there so here you go with my linkedin link in the chat box looking forward to connecting with you all thanks a lot for paying your full attention with me for an hour now handing over to amartya over to you amartya uh thanks a lot uh, krishna khan sir for this session uh like a lot of tools has been discussed in last one hour and i guess our startups might have made some notes out of it and they will be using it in their startups so thanks a lot once again for joining us uh we'll move ahead with our uh next uh topic so this is another pain point for the startups building b2b sales strategy right we have a very special uh, speaker very special mentor for this session as well uh, mr anil alex who is the associate director sales and bd he he has a, he has a vast experience in sales and uh, uh sales and uh, bd so uh, he has experience of uh, working in uh, like uh, corporates like dahane corporation wherein he he was the uh, head of india sales and uh, global customer ser- service and bd for china then he also uh, uh, ex- uh, uh, worked in portscap which, which wherein he was the head of sales in india and australia and right now he is the associate director sales and bd at uh, uh, india ans so i would quickly uh, invite mr anil alex to talk on building b2b sales strategy uh, this has been a uh, i'm sure this is a pain point for our startups and uh, through this session we might be able to uh, address this so i would quickly hand over this session to mr anil alex so over to you Hello, Amartya, you are able to hear me, right? Ah, uh, yes, sir, we can. Hey, thanks, Amartya, for that uh, brief introduction. Uh, unfortunately, I won't be able to switch on my camera. Uh, the the laptop that I'm using is a little old and doesn't have a built-in camera. <laughs> so sorry for that. Uh, and uh, let me, you know, maybe start with asking the participants here. you know exactly what uh, they are expecting if you know you can actually put it on the chat box and amartya if you can also give me a, a brief about let's say the the profile of you know the participants here you know they are from which domains which industries uh, that would that would help uh, i can then you know let's say homogenize or you know kind of uh, uh leverage parts of let's say the presentation according to you know what uh, they would like to hear so maybe amartya if you can just briefly summarize uh, you know sure sir what, what so, are the various yeah. yeah we have some some of these startups uh, from healthcare sector and uh, uh, like some of them are from uh, uh, edtech as well a few of them are working in the fintech and uh, uh, like service sector as well so uh, uh, the major chunk is uh, they are at some pre revenue stage and uh, uh, some are in the idea stage as well as well so this sort of like uh, combination like uh, we have in this room right now and uh, a few st- startups are at idea stage so they might be this might be a helpful session for them uh, to like plan their uh, b2b sales or whatever sales strategy they want to do it for their startup all right so i heard health tech i think fintech uh, and some pre revenue some idea stage anybody from let's say a manufacturing or a product per se 
any startups who are actually developing touch and feel products uh, could be in any any industry i guess uh, yes there are some some startups from manufacturing as well okay uh, guys uh, start to, to all the startups i would request you guys can put your uh, like there is ani shankar who is developing some sustainable products and uh, to replace plastics okay i can see in the chat box then there okay. is one startup with wave engine renewable power something in the renewable power uh, sector then okay. uh, yeah uh, the sort of startups are there sir okay all right good like it's a vast area of you know startups and uh, you know it's like uh, encompassing pretty much everything that we can see uh, right from health tech fintech manufacturing renewables uh, pretty much everything all right so maybe i'll try and uh, let's keep it more free wheeling and interactive that's what i would like to kind of uh, have this session uh, so more of questions and i can kind of answer it it's kind of difficult to punch in let's say within uh, an hour or 45 minutes you know everything about let's say a sales strategy or a, you know a business strategy very very difficult typically we spend about 5 days in just you know going through workshops so this can just maybe touch the you know the tip of the iceberg as i would say but more and more questions would help and i can probably you know provide answers uh, amrita how can i uh, share my screen okay i think all right is my screen visible oh uh, yes sir it is visible all right okay so maybe just a quick introduction uh, i think amrita did introduce uh, this is how i look <laughs> uh, so i've got about 22 years of experience uh, in various geographies i've been handling you know sales and marketing business development i've uh, been also uh, working as a product you know in as a product manager uh, handled customer service and also consulting and in you know, various uh, domains you know i'm currently in the manufacturing motion solutions uh, domain uh, been also started my career in the edutech space then moved on to it and then currently in manufacturing uh, as part of this entire experience i've handled you know a lot of different oems in different uh, sectors i would say uh, medical devices clinical diagnostics robotics and automation uh, security and access aerospace and defense you know instrumentation heating ventilation air conditioning and also textiles uh, so i've been you know associated with these companies danaher fortev tata unisys you know with cedar consulting which is another you know consulting uh, firm and currently i'm working with uh, ultra industrial motion or portus cap uh, you know to drive growth across you know different geographies specifically uh, india and australia new zealand so uh, what i would like to start off with is just to get the expectations from the session today i mean uh, of course i got a brief from amartya with respect to the different you know participant profiles and the domains but anything uh, in terms of let's say what what is the expectations you know from the session uh, if you can either unmute and then you know tell me or maybe you can put something on the chat window any any let's say the challenges that you're facing that would also be good to have let's say you know specifically to let's say the sales or go to market or it's more related to understanding the customer base you know penetrating a particular geography or is it more about marketing or is is it more about let's say segmenting your you know market or is it about finding you know more about let's say uh which are my attractive mar attractive markets so i i see licensing okay difficult to connect education partners okay b2b networking okay drone manufacturing okay corporate gifts okay 
Is somebody into corporate gifts? <laughs> okay, interesting. More sustainable, okay. AIML, okay. B2B marketing, networking ideas, okay. All right, fair enough. All right, so I'll try and keep this in mind as I go through it. In fact, I don't have too much of a presentation. Uh, it's just, let's say, one-liners actually, and then probably I can speak from my experience. Oh, very tough to connect, okay. Generate sales from corporate, okay, SMEs, health analytics, SaaS, base tech, okay. Way tough to connect, perfect person to pitch, okay, good question, which way, best way to promote, okay. All right, let's uh, move on. So I think uh, got a fair understanding of, let's say the challenges that you're facing. Uh, I'll try and try, you know, try and cover some of those questions uh, as part of my, you know, maybe the next 30, 35 minutes with you guys. So maybe start with, let's say, what's a business strategy? I think it's a, you know, a broad term. Uh, you know, what I would say it is, you know, it's a sustainable competitive advantage. You know, what does that mean? So whatever you do, you know, in terms of, let's say you have a product, you have a service, you know, and then you're trying to, you know, kind of bring that out to the world here. And uh, so, you know, what does a strategy do? You know, there are a lot of, you know, issues that uh, I think I saw in the chat box, you know, how do we connect to the right customer base? How do we really, you know, pitch? How do we get to the right person? Uh, you know, how do I sell, you know, best against, you know, the competition that I have there? So all of that, you know, put together, the solution to that would be a business strategy. You know, you have a problem, you know, how do you get that? You know, a pro you know it's a roadmap to get to that final outcome. That's basically a business strategy. And it needs to be sustainable. You know, you need to have a sustainable competitive advantage, you know, to really do that in and out. You know, it's not like one time I do a sale and, you know, I got that. Can I repeat it, you know, and then continuously, you know, sustain that competitive advantage. You know, that's something, you know, that you put together uh, is your product strategy. So in, in simple terms, you know, uh, you know, it boils down to, you know, your, your product or a service that will make customers work better. Basically, are trying to understand your unmet needs or unset requirements, you know, from your customers, and your your product and service is able to do that. Okay, and how how well you actually you know get your uh, you know the value that your product has to you know offer, you know how well you actually communicate that to your you know the marketplace and then uh, get that out in the market. So I'll I'll dive a little bit deeper into sales and growth strategy. I think if you look at overall a business strategy, it's it's very broad. It also encompasses, let's say, marketing promotions. It also encompasses, let's say, building new products and product roadmaps. It also includes how well you're driving or you know running your organization. You know, the HR elements of it. And there is also the execution piece of it. You know, how well your operations are run. So everything all encompassing, it would be a business strategy. But for today's session, I'll more focus on the sales and the growth strategy. You know, what are the elements in terms of, uh, you know, driving growth or driving sales, you know, specifically in relation to, I would say, startups or, you know, companies that, you know, are just newborn. So I would start with uh, the first thing, which is the purpose. I think that's very, very important, you know, the why. Uh, hopefully you guys have worked out, you know, why you are in this, you know, why have you started up or why have you, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, looked at, you know, having a startup, you know, the, the why part of it, you know, what is the problem that you're traveling, uh, solving, you know, why? So the why is, you know, understood very well. Then how are you really solving it? You know, so the how part of it is, you know, is the process part of it. And the what basically is the product or the service. Hopefully you guys have already, you know, worked on it. I think uh, as uh, I heard, you guys are in pre-revenue stage and probably some in the idea stage, but hopefully you guys have gone through this. But maybe I'll, I'll take some time and just, you know, highlight this. So if you look at uh, this particular slide, you know, uh, I've taken an example of Apple. You know, what does Apple do? You know, so basically they do something, you know, what they are going after is, you know, innovation and doing something very, very different. 
and you know they believe in doing things very very differently or you know challenging the status quo so that is the why part of it you know that's what uh, the apple as a company you know is is there and how do they do it is they basically you know do that by you know designing beautiful products that are simple you know user friendly and you know doesn't break down you know it's you know you can count it to do the things you know when it's you know when you when you when you ask for it so that's the how piece of it and how you do it and finally the what is basically all the products that you know happen comes out with you know typically uh, you know the various iphone the ipads the various you know computers that they make you know and you know basically that's an outcome you know finally it's an outcome and you typically buy it so the way i see it is if you have spent a lot of uh, you know uh, time on the why which is the reason why you are there the the, the problem that you are trying to solve you know if you have spent a lot of time there and you are very very clear about it and then the how part of it you know how you are solving it and the what is basically the product and service if that is done i think you have a product or a service in hand okay and uh, if that is there then the rest of the journey becomes very simple or easier once this is you know resolved you can also experiment the what piece of it i mean you know to know whether your product and service is really solving the you know the why you know how do you really do that how do you really and you know ensure that the 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 product or the service is really solving it you can actually do a lot of things you know in terms of actually going out to the market doing you know the minimal viable product you know and then actually doing a voc spending time with your customer base and understanding whether that is really solving the unmet requirements that you know found out and then experimenting it you know so that's the best way to actually do it especially for startups i would say and this is also equally applicable to larger companies we do that uh, very often when we actually look at new product introductions you know whenever it's a new product introduction we actually go with uh, you know uh, uh, let's say an experiment phase you try and you know put that on a piece of paper and just understand if i was to do this you know these features and you know if i was supposed to introduce it will my you know customer base you know accept it is there an adoption uh, and that is done through voc and then i experimentation i take that concept into let's say you know a minimal viable product and then again go back to the you know uh, the marketplace and understand is it still viable the customers are still you know wanting to have it and then i do that iterative you know session and then you know kind of improve it and then finally go to an let's say an map and then finally you know a product which once i have some beta customers for it and then i you know invest in the overall let's say uh, you know go to market in terms of maybe the first thing is do i have the operations teams intact to really go and build that product uh, do i have my sales teams you know intact to really go do do my you know sales work so that's when i then go and invest in those you know parts but before that i do a lot of time you know spend a lot of time in terms of understanding the the product itself and the unmet requirements so once this is done you know the you come up with the what which is the products and services okay now you spend again a lot of time you know i heard uh, teams are having some healthcare tools there are fintechs there are edutechs i think renewables you know all that is either a product or a service so you have come to the what part of it so once you have that i think the next part i think i heard is questions around you know how do you really no or how do you really understand who is your customer base you know how do you understand your market base how do you really you know get to that and i'll give you some examples of how we do it you know maybe uh, it will fit your you know uh, you know question or you know it's probably an answer but uh, maybe you know you may have to do something different so i'll give you an example of how we do it let's say for example right now we see uh, drones as a you know a, a good market for us you know and then how do we really go about you know really assessing that particular market you know drones are really coming up uh, you know in india and across the world there are you know in terms of serving let's say for surveillance market geo mapping also for agri tech and also for deliveries you know drones are going to be used now we have understood the drone market and also its applications and for me my product is you know is basically a a uh, engine or let's say a drive controller which goes and sits into the drone you know uh, helps it fly 
Now the question is, how big of a market it is? You know, is it is it attractive enough? You know, as as a battleground. So then we look at all of these things in terms of what is the total available market which is out there. You know, for drones, we try and understand. You know, if it if you know, let's say if drones are adopted uh, in the Indian market, how big of a market it is. So overall, we see, you know, we try and analyze that in terms of, you know, going and doing a lot of market research, you know, understanding how many, let's say, drone manufacturers are there, you know, how much of them are actual manufacturers versus some of them are provided and a drone as a service. Okay. So you actually try and do a, a lot of, let's say, heat mapping. Okay. Understanding your, you know, overall customer base, you actually, you know, research it on the on you know on let's say google trying and understanding all the you know players in in the you know the drone ecosystem or the eco space then what we do is we try and understand okay of that how much is the revenue potential how many drones are they really building or how many drones have they really sold so that's where you try and do the second bit where you try and understand you know uh, you know make that establish that first contact with them and you know you'd say okay these are my first level contact, or let's say I've, I've been able to, you know, contact the first manufacturer, second manufacturer, you know, two or three manufacturers, and then, you know, do some initial understanding of how many drones are they really selling? You know, how much are they willing to sell or are, are they planning to sell in the next three years? So I would then lay out a, a map in terms of the overall market size. So what we have understood is, Overall, in terms of drone ecosystem in India, it would be about $5 billion. You know, that's the overall ecosystem in terms of the drones and drone as a service, you know, overall $5, $5 billion over the next five years. How, would I, how do I then break it up into saying that how many drone manufacturers would be there? Okay, and then how many motors or, you know, controllers or drive electronics I would be able to sell? That's what would be the total available market for me. And then what are the other manufacturers who are out there in terms of competition? Okay, so I will actually put this all together in terms of the overall market size, you know, the competition, and then whether my product, there's a good fit. And I'll try and understand whether it's an attractive market for me. Okay, so this is, let's say, one of the markets, you know, drones. Now, if I look at my market in terms of others, you know, let's say drone is a market for me. I can also look at robotics as a market for me. I can also look at, let's say, healthcare, you know, let's say medical devices as a market for me. So among these three or four markets, how do I understand or how do I assess and say that the first market for me to, you know, go after is which one? You know, should I go after drones or should I go after health or let's say medical devices or should I go after robotics? So that will actually be dependent on, let's say, the total available market for me, you know, out of this, you know, which is the most attractive for me. And then the second one is, what is the competition looking like? You know, where can I really compete? Do I have a better product? Okay. Is there, you know, a value prop for me to compete in which market? And then also could be a geography, right? If let's say a lot of these markets are not in India and they are, let's say, somewhere in Europe or somewhere in North America, do I have my, do I have the resources to go and really fight that battle in those geographies? Or do I have markets nearby to me? You know, so I look at that and say, okay, for me, it looks like drone is an attractive market than let's say medical devices, because maybe medical device manufacturers are not there in India. You know, those are there in the you know Western world, but not there in you know in India. Similarly, robotics is still not picked up in India as compared to, let's say, a Western world, which is already, you know, let's say mature. So, I mean, I look at a lot of those things and I'll say, okay, for me, then drone makes sense. And let's, you know, pick up drone as a market to really go after, you know, as a B2B, you know. So I would say drone is a market to go after because I've done that analysis. Okay, so that I'm just going, you know, let's say top level. The next thing is within a drone market, if I understood, let's say a drone is a market to go after, you know, my next question is, how do I understand all, you know, within the drone ecosystem? So I would need to then look up and say, okay, let me go and search all the, you know, players within the, you know, drone ecosystem. So I'll do a heat map of all the customers and in within, you know, with which, which geographies. Okay. Once I've done that, the next step is, I think somebody asked me, how do I make a contact? And that's the most difficult part, you know, where you will understand, uh, you know, the drone manufacturers, you would then go after, you know, look up their websites, you actually then, you know, see who are the contacts, you know, you'll do a lot of cold calls, you know, try and understand them. And then 
you finally try and you know go go to the decision maker so that's again a process here you know you need to also map out who is going to be your uh decision maker or who is going to finally give you a sale is it going to be uh the guy who is sitting uh, the purchasing guy or is it going to be an engineering guy you know at your customer or is it going to be an hr head if it's an edu tech or is it going to be let's say you know let's say uh, a planning guy or a purchase uh, let's say an operations guy are you selling it to him who is going to be who is going to be your decision maker so that's going to be your next you know uh, question how do i you know understand how do i get to him it's a, it's a difficult process you know we do a lot of things one we understand let's say we try and get databases of you know these uh, players so we try and buy those databases uh, so that's one piece of you know looking at is second is purely doing call calling and you know going through the normal route where you do call call and understand if i can get to an r and d guy or can i get to a a purchasing guy the other way of doing it is you know through linkedin you know through linkedin also you can actually reach out and you know see from that particular company who are the employees you know on linkedin and actually you know search for that and then establish a contact so those are the various ways in which you actually create your let's say heat map and you know create your database of whom to contact how to contact you know it could be various different ways you know you you could send out an emailer you could actually call them you could establish contacts through social media all of that you know different ways so that's that's the difficult part but once you establish contact the next part of it is also i mean part of this also is segmentation right who are your right customers you know let's say when i say the entire drone ecosystem or let's say the entire drone ecosystem is not going to be your customers for me it's the one who will be building drones not the ones who are buying drones and then you know uh, providing it as a as a service you know drone as a service no they will not be my target customer my target customer will be the drone manufacturer per se right so i need to then segment within that you know how do i you know which are the correct segments for me you know and then the other piece of it is once you've done this you know like you have a list of customers you have the geographies to go after i have also a contact to go after and you know how will I, how will i go after you know will i go through my sales sales force or do i actually hire the you know i go through my channel partners you know so do i have my channel partners distributors or you know uh, consultants or sales consultants you know who will actually be the feet on street so that's the next question uh so if you want to start small maybe you will do it yourself as a startup you know you know it's because uh, we we are trying to be very very lean instead of you know going and hiring hiring a lot of people so you will maybe you go yourself and say okay maybe i'll try and do it myself you know knock on these doors and then you know establish contact and try and you know position myself or position my product and product position my company the other way is if you're trying to really reach out to a large customer base you know it won't be possible through your you know typical uh, channel of you know hiring people and going after them. let's say uh, take an example of let's say zomato or swiggy or you know you are going after edtech uh, let's say you are going after all the schools that are out there or let's say you have something that you are actually targeting corporates you know you may not be able to reach because every corporate would be a potential customer okay uh, let's say if you are targeting uh, corporates as your you know uh, as your customer base you know as part of your edutech services it could be schools in that case how will you really go after in the you know then you will have to have a channel you know let's say you may have to hire channel partners who are in those geographies and then you know they they can establish that contact or uh, you will have to have channel partners who can establish contacts with each of these you know uh, uh, schools right uh, by hiring one or two people uh, you may not be able to you know go after all of them or your further further segmenting it let's say again segmenting here also helps let's say schools which type of schools are you really going after you are going after the you know the schools that are all let's say private schools you know uh, which are only in the metros and they are the ones who would let's say pay for it let's say the students who are going into these schools are the ones your targets then you will just be you know segmenting it according to that you will you know leave all the other let's say uh, government schools and other schools in you know tier 2 tier 3 cities if let's say that's not uh, the right uh, you know target base so then you will again you know kind of segment within that you know where, which is exactly your uh, your your target so that helps you know it depends you know that actually helps when you actually do the segmentation you are very very clear of what's your you know target 
customer base. You know, based on that, you will then uh, look out, uh, look at you know how how do you really approach this uh, you know customers and how do you really go after them. So basically, that's part of this you know exercise. Uh, the next is you know uh, understanding unmet and unset requirements. I think this actually comes even before, uh, but I would also say when you are actually uh, you know doing this segmentation part of it. A VOC definitely helps, you know. It also helps in actually segmenting. You know, a lot of people uh, don't really, you know, give a lot of, uh, let's say, thought to it. You know, uh, I, for me, it has really helped is also in segmenting. You know, when you actually say, okay, you may have probably segmented it based on your understanding, but when you actually go visit customers, you understand that that's not the right customer for you. You know, uh, so you say, okay, I, I may not even look after, you know, let's say, for example, we as a company don't even look, uh, look at automotive as a, you know, uh, industry. We stay away from automotives. Whereas if I look at automotive is the largest industry for motors and electronics and, you know, uh, you know, these uh, embedded, if you, if you actually look at it, this is the largest uh, uh, industry, but we stay out of it because it's very, very competitive. And secondly, we don't have a value to offer to these, you know, automotive companies. You know, they are really looking at price as the final, you know, uh, let's say objective. You know, finally, you may do everything, but finally it will come down to pennies and say, okay, I would like to have this particular motor or I would like to have this particular electronics for this particular price. And you're actually, you know, all the work that you have put in, uh, you know, uh, goes out of the window. So we really stay away from it. We say, okay, I mean, better, more, you know, uh, you, you, you serve the, let's say the healthcare devices sector, you know, there it's more about, you know, saving lives and then more about precision, you know, a particular surgery needs to be done and the final outcome is saving a particular person's lives. And then for that, if somebody is willing to pay a little bit more because of that precision, reliability, robustness, and lower noise and a lot of other, you know, uh, let's say value that you offer, they're willing to pay for it and a longer life and it should not, you know, fail while in surgery. So, you know, you understand a lot of that. At times it also helps, you know, you may, you know, there are unsaid requirements, you know, that is again, very, very different. For example, I'll, I'll give you an, uh, uh, an example here. Uh, uh, let's say hotel industry, uh, you know, uh, I don't know how many, how much, how many of us has actually faced this, uh, at times I've been, you know, traveling and I, you know, take a very early flight and I reach Singapore and then I'm trying to, you know, kind of check in and uh, the hotel says, no, sir, uh, you know, the check-in is till, uh, you know, is not available till let's say 12, you know, or you have to wait till, and I've come in like six in the morning then, what do I do? That's basically, nobody has really, uh, nobody actually said that, right? I mean, basically it is the customers or let's say the, you know, us, like us who are checking in, they understand this pain. But as a hotel industry, they would never tell you that, you know, uh, you know uh, that this is an un unmet or an unsaid requirement. But as a customer, that's basically an unmet requirement for me. And it is not known in the industry, in, in the hotel industry. No, everybody has that same, let's say, check-in time of 12. But let's say if somebody looked at this and say, hey, all the customers have never said that. But if I change my check-in time and make it a little flexible for somebody who is coming a little early, that changes the entire dynamics, right? Yeah, absolutely, everything changes. The second example I'll say is, you know, in the industry, which is medical devices, you know, one thing that everybody, you know, nobody looks at is basically the service aspect of it. Let's say, I'll take an example again. Uh, a, uh, a medical, let's say, a surgical equipment, you know, which is sold to a, you know, let's say, uh, a channel partner, a channel partner finally sells it to a, a clinic or a finally to a surgeon and a hospital, right? And that, let's say that surgery, you know, uh, that, that surgical equipment fails at that point in time. The most important thing at that point in time is because the patient is on the table, the surgeon needs a, you know, an, a, a, an alternate, you know, surgical tool at that point in time. And if that is not available, that entire thing goes to waste and probably an outcome, you know, a patient's life, uh, you know, is, is in danger. If somebody actually understood this and say that, you know, I will actually provide service and not service, I'll actually have a, a backup tool available to you at all times, you know, and that is a need. And uh, basically nobody has told you that because, you know, surgeons never feel it because, you know, have probably not said it. They will always say, 
okay, this product needs to work this way, that way, but they probably have missed the service aspect of it. So a lot of that actually you can understand when you are in that environment, you actually see that environment, you actually be part of that environment and see how that, you know, and be a kind of a fly on the you know wall and just observe what is happening. Some you actually, you know, these surgeons will tell you or these, you know, uh, voice of customers will tell you, but some is just understood, unsaid, and that, you know, makes a lot of difference. Going to the next, I think I, I try to cover this a little bit. So value prop is very, very important. You know, what's that single most important, compelling, you know, unique selling point in your, uh, in your product or a service? Okay, let's say, talk about a service now. Mm, let's say uh, I, I am delivering a, 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 let's say a medical device, okay, to a hospital. And uh, I say, you know, everything else is same. My product will function absolutely the same as, you know, my competition, everything else is same. But I tell him that my service speed is, you know, the moment you call me, Okay, within an hour, I'll provide you that service if it fails. Okay, whereas the other competition, he's probably importing it from, let's say, US and Europe, and he's not able to provide that service. Then that's a key compelling, you know, uh, value prop for you. There could be many such things. You know, it could also be the value prop could be, hey, you're providing the particular product, you know, in Indian rupees as compared to somebody who has to import it. So you are saying, okay, I'll do everything for you. You don't have to worry about, let's say, importing it. I'll get you the product to your doorsteps. That's again a different you know, value prop. Let's say if your competition is not doing it. So try and understand that. What will make your customer happy or you know, you'll know, you feel wow, or it's an unsaid requirement or an unmet requirement and you are trying to solve it. It could be as small as that. You know, uh, So have that compelling value prop very, very clear and that should be very clearly communicated. You know, that's... Uh, sometimes you know we we do that a lot of trainings but it's not really communicated to the sales force and it's finally doesn't even reach to the final end customers whom it's meant for you know they don't even get to know so ensure that whatever is your you know value prop it's communicated right to the very end you know it's it's uh, to your channel partners to your you know uh, distributors your resellers and finally to your customers they should also be able to hear it and that should be all in your let's say your content your you know your brochures, your flyers, everything should com you know communicate that because that's your key value sell. Why a, a, a buyer should you know buy your product? So ensure that you're you know crafting well. You're you know doing that very very clear. The other point I would probably make here is let's say having a very clear customer relationship strategy. Now, how does it help? Uh, for example, I'll give you a little bit of example that I sometimes do. So I. You know, in my company, I sell, let's say, motion solutions. I sell electronic, you know, controllers. I know we also do embedded, uh, you know, software. Uh, so these are, you know, let's say our products and services. But there was a customer, you know, in fact, I was selling it to a company which was, let's say, not very big. I would say about uh, $50 million in, let's say, revenue. And they are not big, you know, uh, uh, compared to, let's say, our customer basis. You know, they are probably like billion-dollar companies that we sell to. So like a $50 million company, and then I was selling, uh, and then he, you know, he's happy. He's, you know, he's doing, uh, he's, you know, I've made a sale. Uh, the next couple of meetings later, he's telling me, hey, I have a problem with, uh, you know, my go-to market, uh, you know, uh, and he's a, a medical, medical devices, you know, customer. And he says, I have, I have an issue with, you know, go-to market. Uh, you know, I'm facing issues with really taking my product and really selling. Uh, now, what would I do? I mean, do I have a play here? Do I have a role here? I mean, as if I if I really think it as you know a pure simple sales guy, I would say, hey, I mean, I have nothing to offer here. I, my offerings are, let's say, I can give you a motor, I can give you a, you know a control electronics, or I can do embedded you know IT or you know software. But uh, I don't think I can help you with this kind of a problem, you know, or a solution. But I I said, okay, I mean, if he's not able to succeed in his go to market. I mean, how will I? How will it help me in increasing my sale? If he doesn't sell, I'm not going to get my second order. You know what I am expecting that you know initially I sold 500 motors. If I have to go to you know 5,000 and 10,000, I have to help him with really go to market strategy. 
So believe me, I actually spent my Saturdays and Sundays actually, you know, spending time with him on actually developing a go-to-market strategy. I mean, I really don't understand, let's say, his his market, you know. Let's say he is developing a medical devices, you know. But then I understood that market, you know. He got his entire sales team. We did workshops over two days. You know, in fact, uh, Saturday, Sundays, and again, I continued for another Saturday and Sunday. And this is not what my company asked me to do. Uh, this is I did it because for me to get my next sale, for me to go from 500 pieces to 10,000 pieces, I had to do it. So that is the customer relationship you know, that you're building. Are you going out of the way to really solve it? Or are you a typical sales guy and say that this is what I have to offer? And you know, beyond that, I can't do anything. So think about it. You know, That's what a customer relationship strategy is all about. The other thing that you can look at is, you know, how are you leveraging today's you know world social media linkedin you know let's say customer has a problem you know reaching out to you at the same time you have something which is you know online and you have something which is he can come provide his inputs and the next day you can or let's say next day or you know you sitting at home can actually get that feedback that hey customer complaint has come no he, he has not called you because it's let's say off hours but then you've got that and you can actually respond to him so have you put in that mechanism for him, for your customers to reach you any time of the day, you know, or the hour. So all that, think about it. You know, if your cust- if your if your competition is not doing it, if you can do it, you can develop a better you know relationship and a better strategy. Uh, small small things. Okay. The other part of it is, you know, we spoke about let's say, you know, we need to do you know understand our heat maps. We need to understand the customer segmentation, how to really, you know, go after, we, you know, build a database, uh, we, you know, develop a compelling value prop, all of that, everything, you know, we have, we have kind of understood all of that. The next piece of it is the action planning. You know, let's say, are you building a very, very crisp and clear action plan of how you are, you know, going to go to market? Okay. I mean, what am I doing? Okay, you've done a you know beautiful strategy. I've got you know drone market. I've got edutech market. I've got robotics market. You know, I'm I'm looking at you know let's say renewables. I mean everything. Let's say I've got my entire market. But what am I going to actually do to actually deliver sales one by one? Let's say okay, which is the first thing? If let's say my sales guy asks me, what am I going to do next? You should be very very clear. Hey, what's your action plan? What are you going to do next tomorrow? You know, in the next one week. In the next month, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, in the first half year, this, you know, the second half year, what am I going to do? You know, what are the key activities? You know, am I going to do? If I have not done my battle on assessments, if I have not done my heat map, if I have not done my value prop, put that on paper, you know, and put a timeline. These are the activities. Ensure there are accountable, you know, people, ownerships, you know, who is accountable. Put timelines to it, you know, assign resources. All of that, build that action plan. When you know it's put it on paper, you know, okay, it's very, very clear. Uh, you know, this is what I'm going to do. Either you are doing it, your team is doing it, or your channel partner is doing it. You know, everything needs to be on paper. You know, very, very clear action plan to you know really drive that strategy. Okay, so that's very, very important. Last but not the least, I would say is the sales targets. Okay. Now, whatever you say, okay, let's say you're starting with, okay, battleground assessments. Okay, I don't know what to what to do. Okay, let's put a target. Okay, how many battlegrounds that are there? Okay, three battlegrounds. Okay, by the end of this month, I would have assessed it. That's good enough, right? That's the first time. Okay, by the second you know, half of the month, I would need to have all the databases you know, arranged. Okay, that's a good, you know, put that target. Okay, what other targets? Do I have a... A funnel of opportunities. Okay, how many opportunities do I have? How many, how many leads have I, you know, been able to gather? How many opportunities have I been able to convert? Okay, from those leads. Okay, what is the potential revenue that I would get? Not this year, next year, or you know, third year. Okay, is that clear from these opportunities? Okay, put a target to it. Okay, I for each sales guy. Okay, this is my target. Okay, you may not be able to convert a sale. But are you bringing in opportunities? Are you bringing in leads that I would finally convert? Okay, there are 10, 10 schools that I can go target. Okay, get those 10 schools as part of my you know, uh, you know, uh, funnel. 
Okay. And then I'll put a plan, you know, okay, I'll convert the first school, second school, and then how is my revenue going to come in? You, know, you will forecast that. So that is another one. So there are many, many KPIs or targets to improve, as we call it. It's targets to improve and, you know, key performance indicators, KPIs to track. Ensure that, you know, if you don't track, you know, it's it, basically, if you don't measure, you will never achieve it. Okay. So if you don't track, it never will get done. So ensure that whatever you're trying to do, also ensure that you are having some KPIs and some TTIs for, you know, your entire team. This could be sales, but it's, it's applicable across. You know, it could be applicable to HR teams who are hiring people. It's applicable to people who are delivering, like, you know, on-time delivery, quality, lead times, you know. It's also applicable to, let's say, cost, you know, who is driving cost. Uh, so everywhere, it's applicable. So targets uh, are very, very, you know, I would say these are, those are, again, sacrosanct, you know, action plans, and then finally your targets are very, very important. So I think I've taken a lot of time here. Uh, maybe I think that's that's all I had. But maybe I can stop here and see if there are any questions. Of course, there were no you know no content here. I was just you know trying to explain from my own experiences and you know uh, what I've seen. But if there are any specific questions or if there are any specific things that you know uh, the team wants. I can take a separate session, very, very focused because it's, it's a very large, you know, huge, it's a large topic. And, I, you know, it takes a lot of time. Like I said, you know, for me, it takes, uh, you know, it's like a session. Uh, it's a workshop, you know, over a period of two to three days, you know, to really do even a single activity of, you know, battleground assessments. Uh, it takes us like two to three months to, you know, assess a particular market, uh, you know, do a proper assessment. Similarly, doing a VOC, it takes two to three months because you won't even get uh, appointments with customers to you know go and you know do VOCs, right? It takes long time. Similarly, each of these activities take a lot of time. So, uh, if if the team has any questions, you know, I'll um, you know, I can answer them here now, or we can also take separate sessions. So, over to Amartya, how you want to you know take it forward from here? I've got probably another five ten minutes I can spare. And I can do it. Uh, sure, sir. Uh, any startup, if they want to discuss anything uh, about their sales strategy with an user, so you may just put it in the chat box. I will try to get it. Uh, like, uh, anyone in the room? I guess uh, there is Thank one you. one person, uh, Mr. De Devesh, he has uh, raised his hand. Yeah, yeah, go on. Uh, if there is a question, I can take it now. Uh, good evening, sir. Hey, Devesh. Yeah, uh, uh, I, ju I just wanted to uh, know how to handle, you know, we, we are a startup and uh, uh, we are into instant uh, tea, coffee uh, cups. Mm -hmm. So now, now uh, this is in regarding to uh, appointment of distributors. Initially, uh, in initial stage, what happens is we don't get uh, the kind of uh, distributors we want, but uh, uh, we get uh, distributors uh, which are not 100% what we want, but 40-50% uh, they can work at. But in long term, they will not be able to work uh, as per our vision and uh, uh, goals. So how, how to do, deal with such situations? Do we do we have to, uh, to appoint uh, work with those uh, 50 60 percent uh, kind of distributors, or uh, we should wait for the 100 percent distributors, uh, which are uh... yeah, no good question, Devesh. I think we had the same challenge, uh, and typically it happens you know when you're going into new new geographies, so you know, uh, even we had the same thing, same, same, uh, let's say the challenge. So what we did is, uh, you know, we try and understand uh, who are the, you know, the best distributors, as you rightly said, whom you really want to work with, you know, the competition is probably working with them, you know, and you probably want to also work with them, you know, so you probably will approach them and see if they are willing to, you know, work with you. But then there should be also a compelling value proposition, you know, why they would be able to sell your, you know, let's say one cups. Okay. Uh, at times it will work. At times uh, it may not. So you may go with, let's say, the one, uh, you know, who is probably not the right fit, but, you know, because they are the only ones available, right? So you will try them out. 
So it's an experimentation, you know, because every time you may not be able to get the right, let's say, fit, you know, in the first time. So you may, you may, you may, you may probably, you know, uh, do that experimentation. What we do is, as part of that experimentation, you lay out the, you know, the boundaries or let's say the expectations as well. Okay. So we say, okay, we will help you out here. You know, this is a new product. You know, we'll help you out. Maybe we will visit with you, the end customers. You know, so we we pitch. The other option is, you know, we can help you with, you know, joint marketing, joint promotions, uh, joint, let's say, trade shows, you know, many things joint, you know, social media campaigning, you know, emailers, whatever, you know, joint. So we we keep a tab on how they are really, you know, really taking your brand forward into the market. You know, so you have a, you have a, you know, let's say leg in there. Uh, so you can kind of course correct, you know, when you see things going wrong, that's one. The other aspect of it is, you know, set uh, targets. So you say, okay, uh, this is, you know, we don't know how this entire relationship will work. You know, let's give it a time of, let's say six months to one year. You know, typically we say one year, you know, uh, uh, because you know it, it takes that time to really, you know, get to the market and really, you know, start seeing sales. So give it a time of one year and then set some targets, you know, realistic targets saying, okay, if you do this by this, you know, here is what I'll give you some additional incentives or I will provide you, this would be my, you know, let's say, uh, you know, transfer price to, you know, a distributor or a channel partner. And then you make this margin, you know, make the, make it more, let's say, compelling for him to, you know, uh, attractive for him to, you know, really see it. But after that time frame, let's say after six months or one year, review it, very, very openly review it with him. If it hasn't worked for you. And at the same time, you will have other distributors, right? For example, what we do also is distributors are also by geography, you know, by district, by sometimes city, you know, because they may have very local presence. So do that. And then you continue to start, you know, appointing distributors for different cities or different districts and different states. And then you will have a similar kind of a mechanism with each of them. And then you'll also learn, you know, because your agreement with Distributor to distributor will also differ, you know, and then your KPIs and metrics will also differ. But you, you know, learn uh, with, let's say, each distributor as you start appointing. And then by the end of the year or whenever that time frame is, you have a clear discussion with them. Hey, it's not working or it's working. We may need to, you know, tweak a little bit or pivot somewhere. Do that. Uh, but that's how, you know, it works. Uh, and then you take a decision. If that's not the right channel partner for you, you clearly tell them that it's not working. And that's already baked into the uh, agreement, right? It's a one-year agreement. Or let's say, you know, this is like, let's say, uh, the honeymooning period, right? You say, okay, if it doesn't work out, you know, we call it quits. That's uh, typically my experience, but uh, you know, it, it can, again, every experience is different. Hopefully that answers the question, Devish. Any other questions or feedbacks? Okay, good. Uh, if there are any other questions, uh, you know, from the team, I can definitely take it on one on one. Uh, Amartya, I'll then sign off if there is nothing else. Uh, sure, and, sir. Uh, uh, thanks a lot for joining and thanks a lot for uh, like addressing the uh, startups. And uh, like, yeah, this was a little bit unique way you first like understood the uh, audience and then you customized the whole session accordingly. So that was uh, really appreciable. Uh, thanks a lot, Anil, sir. Yeah, thanks, uh, Amartya, and uh, thanks to the entire participants and the entire group here, startups. Uh, you know, wish you all the very best uh, in your journey. And then, in case you want to connect with me separately, you know, feel free to do that. Uh, you know, I'll be more than willing to kind of help and support in whatever ways I can. So, wish you all the very best. Thanks you. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye, sir. Uh, all right. So moving ahead, I would like to call uh, our partner Head Start Raipur. Uh, they, they are uh, based out of Raipur and uh, Mr. Harsh Steve Gumbar has joined us from there. So Head Start has supported us a lot in uh, uh, reaching out to startups in Chhattisgarh region and also uh, in nearby in the central India. Right. So I would quickly hand over uh, the mic to Harsh Deep, so if you can share something. Uh, hey, Amartya. Hey, everyone. Good evening. Uh, thank you for this opportunity, Amartya. And uh, 
first of all uh, welcome you guys and uh, it has been a true honor to like you know partner with uh, lemon ideas uh, not just just this year but uh, uh, last year and last last year as well so it has been a great journey and uh, i have seen some great uh, entrepreneurs coming out of uh, this entire process so uh, hey everyone this is harshdeep i am actually a founder of uh, acu legal services private limited at uh, raipur chatisgarh uh, leading head start raipur um, at a state and city level so uh, a quick brief about head start so head start is india's largest uh, volunteer based non profit organization wherein we help entrepreneurs to take the next step so you have an idea but what to do next so head start is there to help you uh, it's a complete volunteer based organization since 2007 wherein we have helped uh, entrepreneurs such as konal shah way back in 2007 uh, dipender uh, from zomato bhavish from ola all these startups and all these entrepreneurs have been the early uh, entrepreneurs in uh, head start uh, central level now at head start raipur we have a few verticals where we uh, work closely with the startups where like you know we have a vertical called head start mentor wherein we help entrepreneurs and founders to connect with their domain experts so if you are into saas based uh, platform and if you have if you are facing any challenges uh, being whether upon a tech side or marketing side or sales side so we'll help you connect with a relevant domain expert who can directly help you one on one to resolve that challenge second we have head start investor network wherein we help entrepreneurs to pitch in front of serious investors and raise round from there on so in the past one year we have helped a couple of startups to raise uh, arounds from uh, these investors and uh, we are partnered with bloom ventures actual ventures at the central level also there are huge network of angel hnis who are interested to invest early on into startups who are actually making an impact lastly i would like you to all like you know invite to head start forum wherein you guys can come mention your challenges attend the events and uh, there on if you need any help in terms of getting connected to a domain expert in terms of getting connected to an investor you can always come to uh, head start and like you know we'll be able to help you out along with lemon so that was it so if you guys uh, want to connect with me or uh, any of the people at head start you can directly coordinate with amartya or uh, you can directly ping me on linkedin so that would be great uh thanks a lot uh, harshdeep sir for sharing this uh, so there are a lot of uh, support which head start can offer you uh, and definitely lemon ideas is there but uh, our partners are also there uh, because of uh, them only we are able to organize these sort of sessions uh, this whole event with their support only so i would uh, uh, we would be very happy to connect some of these startups with the head start raipur uh, thanks a lot harshdeep sir for this uh, sharing once again pleasure thank you thanks a lot thanks a lot amitya so moving ahead uh, we will be uh, taking the next uh, topic of the day so this is the final uh, you can say final topic of day 1 of uh, boot camp training boot camp acquiring first ex customer so uh, this is another interesting topic for startups the ex customer and we have uh, mr ashish jain who is the founder and ceo of the, of the startup board and a it professional he has a he, he is also a mentor and uh, i would quickly hand over this session to him to talk about how startups can acquire their first ex customer over to you ashish sir uh, thank you amritya <clears throat> uh, good evening everybody um, i hope you are all in the indian time zone so good evening to you otherwise good afternoon good morning whatever <laughs> uh, uh, because i was made to know you are also from other countries that's fine uh, uh, let me share my screen and uh, i'll take you through quickly 
what I have to share. Is my screen visible? Uh, yes, it is visible. All right. Uh, okay, uh, please feel free uh, to ask any question during the presentation. Just don't wait till the end. I want to make it more interactive. Uh, that is one sure shot way of uh, taking some deliverables and understanding. So uh, just interrupt or maybe uh, I'll keep coming to the uh, chat messages. Uh, you can post your messages there. So uh, when we're talking of first set of customers, I think uh, there is one difference which I would like to qualify right in the beginning when we are saying first set of customers, generally people, uh, not only startups, but anybody who is in the business tend to have first set of customers from those who he, uh, who he is aware about. So friends, family, relatives, anybody who he's known uh, is the one, I mean, set of people he goes to so that uh, there is immediate traction and some references nothing wrong about it and uh, you continue to do that uh, in case you know somebody who might be able to take your services go and reach to them sell your services take money that's all fine when we are talking of acquiring first set of customers from we're talking of from those people whom we don't know here we are talking of strategy de defining strategy and taking that strategy into execution so here the, the difference lies there that uh, these are the people not known to you and that's where, where uh, the emotional connect will not work alone. There has to be rational, there has to be a value proposition and those are the ones or those are the topics we are going to discuss today. Uh, these are certain points which just I structured, we'll cover. So uh, important thing, uh, before uh, you jump on to selling something, I think uh, everybody does it to varying degree. Uh, you do, you do uh, uh, research, uh, research from multiple sources and those research needs to be authentic. Authentic because in case the research has been done by somebody who you just read about and don't know whether what is the credibility of that research, you might make mistakes. So don't make mistakes, take the research that is credible. In case you are coming up with an innovative product which has no similar similarity with any other research which has been done, then discard the reports because you are into an innovative space. Uh, just look for an alternative. Suppose Uber, Uber has no parallel. They were no other companies who have been created creating a business model which uber did but of course they were car rental companies they were shepherd driven car rental companies which always have been the benchmark so in case the same type of companies are not there go for a similar type of companies uh, for the research uh, or research findings or site ascertaining the market size and so and so forth or the competition so uh, these are uh, some basic gyan, uh, I think you are well aware of it. Uh, but important thing is, in case you can get access to Traxon, T R A X C N dot com, or CB Insights, or uh, Crunchbase, these are very, very reputed databases which will give you a lot of information and accurate information because they have taken a lot of pain in getting such uh, a detail. Uh, uh, many times uh, you go for, uh, I have heard people saying that I have no competition. That's a most, most societal mistake anybody would make. So important thing is, uh, even if mobile says that a uh, mobile competitor to mobile are many, that means there is a camera manufacturing uh, company. There is a competition of mobile with the camera manufacturing company because camera is available in the mobile and he will be competing on cost or feature with the camera making company. There would be a PDA, which 
personal digital, digital assistant. Uh, they, so uh, calendar, notebook, notepad, uh, scheduler, alarms, uh, alerts, all that also is available in the mobile. So can we say mobile is a competitor to a PDA device? Of course it is, but mobile is omnipresent and there are many other things which one can do. So uh, it is also important to find out who your competitor is, for which feature people generally take a mobile or purchase mobile or your product. And then you qualify that you would have these as your competitors. So for example, uh, if you happen to be in the hospitality industry and you have a hotel or you intend to be having um, uh, motels, hotels in whatever, so you've got to find out whether your competitor is a five-star hotel, four-star, three-star, motel, highway hotels, uh, city hotels, luxury hotel, heritage hotels. So you have to find out your competitor because in case you have not found your right competitor, you would not be able to ascertain why people are going in this particular hotel and your positioning may go wrong. We'll talk about the positioning in, in just a while. Okay. So uh, this is what is the most, most, most important thing anybody should do when you are doing any go-to-market strategy, that means you want to acquire first set of customers, you need to find out who your target customers are likely to be. And this who is the better qualified qualification means uh, the better persona of uh, identification you can do, the better it is. Um, uh, so, so let me give an example. Of course, these uh, geographical segmentation, which means uh, when you launch your products, suppose you are in Nasik, would you have Nasik as your geography, Bombay as a geography, Delhi as your geography, or any other city? So generally, you tend to sell in the same geography because it is least costly. You don't have to uh, uh, incur a higher transportation cost. Moreover, you can go and meet the customer. So it's very natural that you would be selling in the same geography. Uh, so what happens if you sell in the second geography is the magic. When you are into your own geography, you as a founder can go and get the, get the feedback. But what will be the treatment and the communication method available in a geography you are not physically present is something which you need to strategize. Socioeconomic factor, whether you would be talking and catering to the premium class, budget class, lower middle class, bottom of the pyramid, whichever, gender, age, by activity, all the CAs, all the lawyers, all, all the IT professionals, or what, what kind of uh, segmentation you would like to have. Those people who have high disposable income, income more than 10 lakhs or whatever, this is another segment you can find out. Based on this, uh, you would do this persona, persona development. That means uh, you can have more than one persona for your as, a, as your customers, but based on the segmentation, you would have some, some personas developed and based on those personas, you would find out what do they like, what do they eat, where do they go? And based on their taste, you can develop your proposition. You can define your price. You can position your brand in such a manner that these people would most likely to take your product. Now, let me give you an example. I was talking to a few people, I mean, about 50, 60 people who were ex, who, who, who were in army. And uh, these people were about to retire in the next one year. <clears throat> so army had arranged this entrepreneurial training for them. And they were trying to find out what is good for them after a year. So uh, I was interacting with everybody uh, and I asked one gentleman, uh, what would you do? He said, I will start my business in clothes. I asked him, okay, that's good. Where would you start? He said, in my hometown. So he named something. Uh, what would be, what would this 
uh, cloth business be catering to women, children, men, he said all. But I told him, I mean, in case you want to cater to everybody, then you would have a problem because you will have to keep a large number of large amount of inventory where you have to do a lot of investment because uh, female sizes, female choices, alternatives, colors, then children, then men, I think you would have to block a lot of people, lot of money initially. So he understood it. He said, uh, I would only sell it to fat people. That's a brilliant idea. Brilliant idea because a, a plus sizes uh, people, uh, um, uh, not everybody caters to them. So it is a very big differentiation for him. And he can also correlate the differentiation, what would they need, their taste, their likings. Also inventory would be very, very specific. And most people are likely to come to him because there is no difference. There is absolute differentiation in his approach to cater to a segment. The segment may be small, but once he has established his credentials as a particular category, then he can start another category and third category and fourth category because he became popular. Now, I, I said, oh, that's fantastic idea. You are definitely thinking strategically. You are. But strategy is basically not to include everything. Strategy is basically to include or exclude many things. What would you not do? That's strategy. So he, he mentioned that he would not cater to everybody. He would cater only to the plus size people. That's fine. I told him that's a fantastic idea. What would additionally you do? He said, there would be many people who would come to me and uh, uh, I would cater to them. Uh, I asked him, what would you do in case a competitor who is Bajuwala Dukan also finds out that this is a hot selling product, he also starts keeping, keeping the same, same side of, uh, same side of uh, size, uh, plus size clothes. He says, okay, um, uh, I would need to innovate more and what I would do, I will keep a dietitian at my shop. Brilliant idea. I what I was flat. He was true entrepreneur. True entrepreneur. He has given me insights of a definite business. He would be successful. I don't have means to be in touch with him, but I think the way he has been thinking is a sure shot magic for his business. He started thinking for the customer first. He started thinking of how would he he would make his customers happy. In case he puts if he asks a dietitian to sit at his shop, he knows that he is cannibalizing his business. It is not that he is going to cater to those plus sizes people in case they become slim. But still, he is creating a wow factor amongst his customer. Maybe dietitian is uh, not going to be as effective because people, had they been uh, possible to be uh, slim, they would have already become slim because they also know how the dietitians need to work. But the magic is he is caring for his customer and that's where uh, the customer loyalty will come and people will come to him and not to the Bajuwala shop, even if the Bajuwala shop keeps the plus sizes. So important thing is, Understand your customer well, segment them into multiple sub-segments, cater to those sub-segments choice by choice, that this segment has a preference of this kind, how would I cater to it? In case my competition also catches up fast, how would I differentiate and still provide value? I hope that's, that's understood. In case you have question, let me know. Just unmute and ask. Okay, so how do you uh, provide a business strategy? Uh, business strategy can be many. What, are, what is the basis premise for your business? Why, why you are into the business? If you ask this question, some people say, I want to create a big business. The growth is a strategy. You want to create a unique product. 
maybe not necessarily the best but unique so that is that could be a strategy you want to make a lot of profit a lot of money that could be a strategy price skimming strategy okay so uh, i am making very least uh, uh, profit <coughs> but high volume that could be a strategy acquisition strategy i want i'm making the business only to be acquired so i can also be visible among those people who might be my suitors who might be willing to buy me out that is the only strategy and that's where he would also be more visible and send communication to those who are likely to acquire him uh of course uh they could be multiple possibilities but you got to choose one because if you are guided by one formulate one business strategy it's likely to pay you well it's likely to give you success early and it could be any of them but keep that focus in case there is a dilemma of any decision to be taken think in those that particular line that this is my business strategy does this decision fits into the business strategy or not is going to be the guiding principle so um go to market strategy uh the multiple points it's a vast subject i'm going to touch very little in case you ask me and prod more questions i can probably put more light on that uh how you define your strategy for acquiring per set of customers is you've got to uh, understand who your target audience is likely to be i hope uh, you've understood what is tam sam song uh, so you've got to define who your target audience is like the example i gave that plus size customers then you have to define your product differentiation like i gave you the example of that dietitian along with the plus size people then go for the positioning you can position it in such a manner that people start thinking of you associated with that particular position or picture in mind so let me give an example um what is the chocolate known for many people can say chocolate is sweet dish uh is it positioned like sweet dish if you remember there was an ad by cadbury's whereby they, they there was a cricket field and there was a girl who started jumping from the uh, racks uh, uh, people stand and came onto the ground and while eating chocolate started dancing it was a magical moment that means people have i mean the the home team had won the match and she wanted to celebrate so the chocolate companies are not saying that this is a sweet they are saying associate chocolate with happiness any happy moment take chocolate so this is a positioning you better do different like there was an example in the past whenever you think of color think of johnson and nichols whenever you think of safety products think of johnson baby powder i mean people start and uh, uh, associate and give much longer loyalty in case you associate it with some emotion and that's where the product positioning is which comes handy so position your product in such a manner that people have a image which is favorable to your brand then you do the pricing based on the positioning whether you're positioning it on the premium class middle class lower class your pricing will be dictated and based on this you define your go to market strategy how would you acquire customers whether it will be a channel distribution channel you would have your own stores you would go online you would do branding through seo digital marketing how would you acquire your customers all these four factors of identifying the target audience differentiation product positioning pricing 
will guide you for acquiring the customers. There would all, always be some customers who would not be part of your strategy, but that's fine because you intend to acquire a certain set of customers, 90% customers if you acquire based on your strategy, 10% customer will be out here. And in case you acquire those customers who you want to target, then you would meet your revenue strategy. Yes, that means this much is a revenue, this many number of customers uh, of this kind. If you don't have a customer acquisition strategy, that means these four pieces are missing, then you would be acquiring customer left, right, and center. Any, way, any which way, pricing, they may not be giving you the price. You would not be positioning your product in the mind of the potential customer that anytime they want to purchase, this is the product, they would just purchase it because you did some promotion and they will purchase. That's not going to long, uh, that's not a strategy for long-term uh, customer acquisition. It would be a blip. It would be a short-term gain. Anytime uh, um, uh, you put in some effort, put in some memo and money, you will gain some customer and then it would be back to normal. So, but after after that, every time you have to dig your well and uh, drink the water. So important is in case you can concentrate, discuss, brainstorm on identifying your tar target audience, and that means segmentation. Lot lot of lot of effort will go sorted. <coughs> I'll just pause it here and uh, understand, do you have any <coughs> uh, questions here? No questions? Uh, any startup, if they want to ask anything to Ashish, sir? They may put in the chat box or may unmute themselves and quickly ask it. Can anybody discuss what product are they making? We can discuss that as an example quickly. Probably five minutes we can discuss on that. Uh, anyone would like to volunteer for this? Uh, hello, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, Shashi uh, Sir. Uh, so our startup is India Speaks Research Labs. Uh, so we are working on uh, language technology tools like uh, automatic speech recognition, uh, text-to-speech, and NLP and for chatbots, uh, specific to Indian languages as well as uh, Indian accented English. Uh, so we have been developing, uh, concentrated on... Uh, e-commerce first. So we have developed a e-commerce uh, voice assistant browser application uh, demo video. And uh, simultaneously, we are also working with a uh, BBNL, uh, internet service provider and satellite channel, uh, satellite channel provider in Bangalore. Uh, so they wanted a uh, voice assistance for their Android smart box, uh, like go to this channel as uh, it will be difficult to remember the channel number of each channel. Right? So they will just have to say, like a kind of Amazon Fire Stick. Uh, so that's what, uh, so we are given demo to them, uh, but still uh, we are in conversation with them because they wanted delayed response. Uh, the uh, response time was too much delay. Uh, so we are just bootstrapped. Uh, so we don't have only a single server we have. Uh, we don't have the I mean, uh, resources to afford uh, AWS cloud resources or something. Uh, so this is the stage we are in and also we are right now in talking with uh, one of the person who wants to create a language learning app for kids uh, using uh, and test their vocabulary or pronunciation skills for kids using speech recognition. Uh, so these are the things right now, uh, the stage we are in right now. So still, I mean, like, I mean, uh, we don't want to go to all the markets. I mean, because uh, this tools which we are developing can be implemented in every market. I mean, wherever people have to have conversation which can be automated, uh, but uh, that can't be done with uh, lean teamers uh, first uh, with just bootstrapping. So uh, we are, I mean, uh, we are like struggling with uh, getting investments or the clients. Uh, so it's like a chicken and egg problem for us. 
uh, if we go to clients they will be asking for the prototype so if we go to in order to develop the prototype or the demos uh, we need certain investments so this is where we are structured okay uh, so uh, i uh, what i understood is uh, you are creating uh, some voice based uh, command yes. system voice based yes. command system j- like j- just like uh, um, kind of google alexa. assistant uh, ah, yes, sir. Exactly. alexa does uh, but uh, alexa talks about a few things which uh, are activation of uh, uh, songs uh, yes, activation of uh, or actionable buttons yes, which are electric buttons yes, uh, so so it does certain things and you yes, can also differentiate based on the voice based action commands yes, uh, now based on the business requirement right. customized so important thing is uh, so you can't beat alexa uh, they have much more deeper financial uh, muscle So yes. what we got to differentiate is what general market trend market needs are uh, you identify them and try to think of a very unique uh, maybe a small market but unique use cases whereby you can say this is going to help voice based commands for example elderly care oh in case elderly care voice can be recognized for some uh, uh, accurate accuracy maybe 90% accuracy 85% accuracy okay. and they can actuate certain things which will help them so this is also a very big market of yeah. elderly people looking for a help and help is not available and then you would have a very important use case whereby you can sell and position yourself among those companies who are providing healthcare services for elderly care yes sir yes sir yeah so it so I, we have also applied for one of the use case in startup india program on one of the event in cisco healthcare problem statement yeah so yes. cisco does it qualcomm does it in intel does it so they have uh, all these voice actuated actuated services even uh, nvidia has a program yes sir so, inception program yeah yeah so so um, um, i think you can participate there some money in case you win the prize uh, some money will come from them or in case not the money they'll give you the circuits and uh, lab to access yes sir yes sir. we applied for the cloud credits there uh, we have been selected and the process is going on okay thank you sir anybody else so uh, so like shashidharan mentioned uh yeah sunil i'll come back to you uh so uh, like shashidharan mentioned uh, his product and also the challenges uh we came out with one suggestion i'm not saying that that is the only suggestion but uh, it is that you are focusing on a particular segment based on this segment you would be able to create your product much more better because here the focus target group is defined target group their needs are defined you have studied them better and then you approach those companies who might be interested in caring for them and then you uh, once they are they they see that you have already created something you have a better financial model also coming from there uh, sunil please go ahead uh hi sir good evening very good evening good evening thank you thank you so much sir actually uh, we are a health tech company we are working on preventive and predictive analysis so after the covid lot of cases that has been seen ki they are converting into the type 2 diabetes and the lifestyle this is like sugar uh, that it means diabetes blood pressure and the thyroid can be converted into the future like critical complication like heart attack kidney failure so this technology we have developed it is a saas based technology that we want to implement to the corporate to add a value to how we can actually improve the productivity of the employee and the same time it can reduce the overall operational cost for the company so it can be reduced the overall sick leave and uh, they can be more productive and creative into the work space and also the mental health also challenges it can be reduced so we have the dietitian panel they will work toward the preventive guideline and they stick to it from going to be analyze their health and identify the future risk ki what is the probability of getting the heart attack or kidney failure or stroke or neurological complication we will read their health profile so this technology we wanted to be first of all approach to the b2b segment like any uh, corporate or small industries 
so this is the primary uh, like things that we wanted to initiate so how we can approach this one because we are unable to find a particular person to pitch our product and things like this is an authority person who can take actually decision for this one uh, yeah sunil what i understood is uh, you uh, you are creating a health product whereby you would be able to monitor and also give pre indications that something is happening or possibly going to happen you will do the predictive anal analytics and that way yes, health of the uh, employees of a corporate are likely to be better <coughs> in case that happens first of all you got to convince yourself whether you have that such a technology uh, so for that uh, you got to have a, a, a external validator who would validate that this technology works so that means there has to be a certification agency uh, who certify that your your product is good and uh, uh, it is effective in case this has been done then of course corporate because corporates are also also interested in the welfare of their employees but they may not be convinced so far whether this is the right technology because you can always do a self proclaim that your technology is good uh, the team sir actually funded from the delhi government also we have access the byrac grant and recently we supported from microsoft accelerator program and i am basically nanotech research scientist i am particularly researching my area of research itself is a lifestyle disease so i am basically uh, completed my degree in nanotech yeah, so the credentials yeah credentials are all in place uh, sunil uh, what i am saying is the the kind of tool you have created uh, the predictive analytic tool yes, needs sir. to be ascertained it needs to be validated from an external body okay 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 yeah because uh, you have credentials you have been working maybe there are organizations like microsoft accelerator byrec who have already uh, ascertained that your product is good but they they have ascertained you to work on this this product the yes, effic sir. efficiency and efficacy of such a product is yet to be established and in case that mm -hmm. gets established then corporates would be here for you that's my understanding okay sir and corporate so, uh, sir, we will, we will look on that after. yeah just look look for uh, external validation it will be good uh, uh i i i'm i'm saying so because uh, when you approach corporates they are very skeptical kind of people who would say they din mein bachche aate hain aise wale jo apni kuch na kuch cheez bechna chahte hain they need to find, first of all identify whether ye jo cheez bech raha hai theek bhi hai ya nahi hai yes sir it's based on the principle and all the research and everything it's going to be done and all this so we will do that part we will validate from some of the healthcare facilities and some of the like those who have been uh, like partner hospital also we can go with them is it like going to be work yeah you you can uh, of course uh, go with partner hospitals problem with partner hospital is there is a ethical angle which comes to them comes to them hospitals generally have a ethical committee they may not give you their patient and patient data uh, so easily so it will be better in case you do it with a clinic instead of a hospital Mm -hmm. Okay sir thank you thank you so much sir thank you very much all right uh, yeah sanj uh, sange uh, yeah from bhutan hello sir uh, i have a query and uh, i would like to get insight on how to get uh, the trust uh, trust for the local talents or local companies out here uh, we mostly deal with uh, drone services and uh, drone manufacturing technology and then what happens is most of the time uh, the governments or or the um, customers uh, they do not trust uh, since a uh, drone thing is new out here uh, they do not trust the local local talents out here so how to overcome that uh, yeah uh, sange uh, this is a, a difficult thing uh, uh, even uh, in india uh, anything foreign is readily and gladly accepted fast even if we are technologically superior to many countries <coughs> but it is a mentality uh, just convince one person or one set of people in your geography outside your geography and those testimonials needs to work for you because whatever kind of talent you have whatever 
product uh, uh, product benefits anybody can see whatever you proclaim that these the product has these many benefits nobody is going to believe because it is self proclaimed tell uh, uh, benefits in case you can make them uh, 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 verified or let an external person validate and say and give testimonials that is going to help you build the trust second is you can start giving free service for pilot because if somebody doesn't believe that your product is superior you just say you have nothing to lose give them free service for a certain period small amount of period let's say one week two weeks or 10 weeks a uh, small service that means you would give only drone services for few hours or for a specific purpose and that way you would establish your credentials because then trust will be built up uh, uh, when you show something people believe in you thank you sir so uh, so would you be able to connect us uh, for some uh, credible credible companies uh, for validating uh, our works for example uh, we have done a few projects uh, so if you could connect us uh, for the validation i think we can uh, increase our credibility uh, yes uh, that's possible uh, i think uh, i'll get connected with you to lemon ideas uh, i don't have your contact details uh, so let lemon idea facilitate it and uh, when i get it i'll speak with you again thank you very thank you uh, uh sunil you can uh, down your uh, hand it is still raised <coughs> yeah thank you ranjit you can go ahead <coughs> uh yeah sir uh, i appreciate what you have just uh, given us a lot of keywords to think upon uh, and i encountered one more keyword which you mentioned that was uh, use case uh and for that uh, i mean designing for the customer segment uh, matters more or designing for the use case is also important because i would like you to share a little bit light on the particular thing of use case see use case is a set of customers so i said personas personas means personality traits and they are not only one set of people one people one person they are set of people when we say uh um like plus size they are a set of people and we can say their taste for plus size men men's are of one type and plus size females would be of one another type plus size children would be of third type now these are the personas what their taste are who are the decision maker for that persona so children ke liye decision maker is not children it could be mother and once we have identified that these are my personas or use cases use cases means uh, where it can be used my product can be used in such situation but ultimately it is the person who is going to purchase it it could be a corporate scenario use case could be a corporate scenario but ultimately who is the person who is going to empower and purchase your product who is in the position of and the influencer or the decision maker those are the personas you got to find out because ultimately communication doesn't go to the use cases communication goes to the people who are managing that use case okay, okay. so it, Thank it you. is important yeah it is important that you target those your communication which will be a uh, beneficial and preferential uh in the minds of those people who are decision maker and influencers in the use yeah. case scenario yeah great right. thanks a lot sir all right okay uh, so let me jump back again yeah these are uh, what i have discussed already uh, so when you go and do sales that means your product is ready you have defined your uh, go to market strategy you have understood what who's your target market uh, target audience you have also understood your differentiation creation 
uh, factors and pricing them and launched it. Now you got to forecast. And when you do forecast, you got to find out what is the objective of forecast. Is it, is it the end result in terms of numbers or end result number of products sold or end result in terms of the revenue generated to any number of products. So initially you are interested in selling low numbers with high revenue. So that means you've got to price it premium and position it that, that way. In case you want to say, I want to make maximum margin. Maximum margin means the difference between price and cost. That way, the, the strategy would change. It's not only maximizing revenue, it's maximizing margin. So there's a difference between maximizing revenue and maximizing margin. <coughs> you would leave a particular sale opportunity in case the margin is less than 20%. Had it been revenue driven, you would still take it even if the revenue, uh, even if the margin is 15% because you are interested in having the top line high. And that's where the sales forecasting needs to have objectives. Write your assumptions, understand that uh, forecast is likely to be changed, likely, likely to change. So don't make forecast of for long durations. Uh, so make a forecast of with 95% probability for the next month, because that must, that must be very, very accurate. And you must be certain that these, this is the pipeline, especially in B2B cases. For B2C cases, in case your channel has already stabilized, you have already created your channel and has started pushing products through the channel, then that pr probability of 95% can be achieved. But if it is a new product, you can't have any probability. Uh, Another important factor which I would like to leave you with uh, is a sales proposition. Just, just read this. I was roaming around uh, in Lucknow. Lucknow is in UP. Uh, and uh, uh, they, there's a high street there, uh, which is called Hazrat Ganj. I happened to see uh, like ice cream vendor uh, who, was say, who has written chilled ice cream. Um, Ice cream to childi hoti hai. Chilled ice cream, what extra benefit it is providing, I did not know. I did not even get to know. So chilled ice cream has no value, no message basically. High class boutique. Boutiques are always considered to be high class. So what is different, different in high class boutique? Best tuition center, whom are you comparing it with? Greener car. Greener means is it a is it does it run on uh, LPG or CNG uh, electric? What is greener? Number one media house in India. Many many claim number one media house in India. There is no qualifier which anybody attached to it. They cannot be number one. Many of them. So number one media house in India in Hindi segment. Number one media house in India in a Telugu segment. Now, there has to be a qualifier. So this is superfluous. People will not believe it. This is trust deficit, trust breaker. Largest company in India, uh, sorry, uh, largest, uh, yeah, largest company in India, largest in what time, what sense? Is it largest in, in the sense of, uh, uh, revenue, largest market capitalization, or whatever. Now, when you define your sales proposition, it should be in such a manner that you are able to provide your value proposition to the end customer in one phrase. It is even shorter than elevator pitch. Jessa, many example bataya tha. Clothing for plus size. Clothing for plus size is a 
I mean, he's not saying best clothes for plus size. That's not needed in the locality. So clothing for plus size is good enough. If there is a competition, then he has to put some additional adjective why somebody would need to come to him, not go to the competition. Then the newer adjective needs to come. But for the time being, when there is only one shop of, uh, for clothing for plus size, this one is sufficient. But it reflects that there is something which people will immediately get to know and uh, take it from there. So people do not buy products or service. They buy a proposition. When I said the chocolate example, people don't buy chocolates just because they want to have something sweet they want to have the moment of uh, uh, happiness or they want to enjoy it. and that's that's also the reason why they go and take chocolate many people also take chocolate because of the sweet tooth in case you are outside india sweets per se what we have in, in india they won't be available so they go and satisfy their uh, uh, sweet tooth cravings using the chocolate that's a different thing <coughs> but generally uh, happiness is associated with chocolates at least in india and that's where it has been positioned so sales proposition is important and it comes from positioning this is also something which you should should focus on how would you be remembered with Sales proposition you can have based on quality, assurance, convenience, pleasure of shopping. Many people have started saying uh, grocery in 20 minutes, 10 minutes. That tells something. I mean, this is, this is a proposition. That is a value proposition. Whether this value is understood and liked by the customer is something different. But at least those who are selling such a proposition, understand that this is a value of quick delivery. In case, uh, pay we call. Pay we call positions it in such a manner that bond for centuries. Bond for centuries means it is a, it is a, a trust which they are selling that using this product, you are glued for centuries for the products where you are using baby call. <coughs> so uh, any of these like environment friend friendly, uh, environmental friendly, had this been greener, instead of greener car, it would have been environmental friendly car would have been much better. If it comes to pleasure of shopping, Let's say, in the, instead of chilled ice cream, you can say mouth-watering ice cream. That's also a value proposition. I hope you've got the message. So sales proposition are complete phrase depicting the value of the product. Let me also give you a positioning and pricing strategy. And this is my last slide. I think uh, we are overshooting the time. I hope uh, we can go on for another two, three minutes. Okay. No is the right, no is a good answer. Uh, um, no answer is, uh, I'm, I'm uh, considering affirmative. Uh, so there's a company uh, which is called T-Box. This tea box founder, Kushal, uh, uh, has been into the tea business. That means their family has been in tea business since six generations. Uh, they grow tea in the Assam area, Darjeeling, uh, Siliguri, and many other places. They have tea gardens. And once the tea is plugged, they sell it into the exchange, which is Calcutta exchange, uh, Tea Exchange. And that Calcutta Tea Exchange Anybody who uh, takes it from there, packages it and push, pushes to the dealer network, dealer net distributor, dealer, and then a retailer. This is how it goes. There is a seven step process. 
And this seven step process nearly takes about 12 to 24 weeks for this tea from garden to consumer. What this Kushal, Kushal happens to be a founder of Tea Box. He studied from Singapore Technical University and he said, my sixth generation, five generation have been just doing the same thing and the margin is reducing every day. I need to think differently because that's what he has studied at Singapore Technical University. Uh, uh, he said, let me think it differently. He put, since they have the tea gardens, tea was available. He put a tea packaging plant there to keep the freshness in, inside those uh, boxes. Those boxes which were packed were, were absolutely fresh. And these fresh tea also had the better taste because when the consumer is getting the tea in 24, 12, 12 to 24 weeks, the, the uh, uh, freshness is lost or reduced. So what it does, he, he did is uh, he packaged the tea there and started selling through his online website called Tea Box. This <coughs> plucking of the tree, a tea to delivery in the home of the user takes now one week, maximum one week, <coughs> irrespective of where you are in <coughs> around the world. He sells tea in 60 countries now. And these 60 countries, he's able to deliver in one week. That's a pretty good value proposition for a tea company, whereby he is charging nearly three times what he has been charging earlier using the auction method. So his margin has improved Im immediately. It is all because of the positioning and the pricing strategy positioning that he doesn't want to go through the same channel. So its business model has changed. He has positioned it himself into a premium segment, not for India, outside India. That's the position. I hope this is also a good method to understand how one does the strategy of putting the price, putting the positioning and the value proposition into place. I'm done. So any questions, we can take last set of questions. There's one message in the chat box. Okay, not, not the message. Any last moment questions? Uh, no questions? Okay, that's it from my side. Thanks a lot. Do well. Bye. Thanks a lot, uh, Ashish, sir, for joining uh, this and spending time with these startups. Uh, startups Thank might you. have got some insightful uh, like things from you about getting their ex customer, and uh, they might be using it for for their in their startup journey, right? So, thanks a lot again, Ashish, sir. Thank you, Amritya. Um, All the best, uh, everybody. To all these startups, uh, like uh, thanks a lot for joining. And uh, this was the last uh, session for the day one of the training bootcamp. For tomorrow, we have uh, for the day two of training bootcamp, we have two sessions planned. Both are really interesting. One is related to handling your finance, right? And the second version is something. Uh, I'm also very much interested in the, uh, it's about your uh, mental health and spirituality, which you can, which we all are facing a challenge in this uh, COVID time, right? So do join us at five. Uh, we already have shared the invite with you. This session will start from 5 p.m. onwards. And uh, we have a first session planned between five to six and the second between 6.15 to seven. Yeah.